gentlemen. Mike's E Keys for Cars. Chi Chi Car, his great crew at Supel Sighting and Remodeling. Supel's Flowers, home of 1 800 800 Rose. Also, the Midtown Family Restaurants and Midtown Number no. 2 at Walmart. They are open today. The flooring's done and and they're uh, and they're running as uh, as normal. Uh, so Midtown Two, and Midtown One, both open today. Hertine and Stocker Jewelers, one hundred and one South Dubuque Street, downtown Iowa City, Premier Automotive in North Liberty, the Oxyol Inn with their great Sunday brunch in the Amanas, Streets Maintenance. Hi Jimmy, and Doctor Lance Forbes Diamond Dental in Cedar Rapids. Here is Tom Suter and Pat Hardy from HawkFanatic.com. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're here. Yeah. We are here. You are there. You guys having a good show? Oh. Where's Hunter? Maybe the best. He is in uh, Chicago. His uh, brother's been ill. So oh. He's up there for uh, today and tomorrow to check on him and stuff. Good luck to his brother. Yeah. Nice yeah, you, for sure. Nice that you gave him a couple of days off. I he just about it. he I, just had two days oh, off. What you, the hell? You'll get him when he gets. I mean, <laughs> yeah, he'll be working. He'll the next do like a nineteen eight straight, weeks, nineteen day <laughs> straight binge. Well, he had one of those. <laughs> yeah, he did. You know what you're going to have here? Short the storm. It's carved out some incredible potholes on that. Driveway. Oh yeah, no. These and are going to be historic. No, and yes. uh, the gorge is yeah, returning. It's returning, but there's. Places out there where you can't avoid. You're gonna. Oh yeah, yeah. Well, and it's too early in the year to. No, we can't get them fixed. They, they'll be gone in uh, the beginning of May. Yeah. Yeah. Well, they really how? What are you doing? Well, we'll have you're gonna to fill them up with the gravel. Yeah. 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 I like that, but then the problem with that, those those white rocks just. Yeah. Wreak yeah. havoc on the underneath. There's your no car. escaping no. the. You can't pave it, and we couldn't uh, afford it anyway. And that's why car yeah. dealerships love you guys, you know, because yeah. you, they know that everyone who comes out of their cars are just getting beat to hell, and they'll be back for yeah. more another cars. car. Another yeah. car. You're about due. I think it's a deal. You guys. I was thinking, <laughs> I really was thinking about it, but Not I got me. my car all fixed up. I got new tires. I got, you know, they they because the yeah, you had a rental the other day, didn't you? Uh, no, that was my wife's. Oh, that was your wife's car. Okay, I had never seen that. The, the side uh, walls of the tires were ripping. Well, so you got all new tires? or No, just It could front. be because of this, don't you think? It uh, could be. I mean, that's... You do it every day. It's not... I mean, yeah. a lot of people go years without driving on gravel road. Yeah. That's true. Some people never do. Yeah, you do it every day. You do it every day. You're a gravel guy. And then I needed, uh, you know, brakes and stuff. Those pesky brakes. <laughs> yeah, like they want you to stop. And I needed a battery. Yeah, I need. I've got. Yeah. So right. you're just talking. You just mentioned about a thousand dollars worth of stuff. Not yes. if you have Car Shield with Ice T and yeah, then Vivica you, A Fox. Yeah, and, then you can spend like uh, twelve grand a year to get that thousand dollar. I like I said when I looked into Car Shield <laughs> after two and a half years, I could have bought a new transmission. Seriously. <laughs> yeah. No. Yeah. It's about one hundred and seventy yeah. bucks a month or something yeah. like that. Yeah. Yeah, it is. But Ice T is doing it. So. Who else? Ice T, Vivica A. Fox. Who else is doing car uh, show? They, they got another. Oh, they've had got a number of them. Yeah. No, they, it costs uh, eight eight ninety four. Is that one of Shatner's uh, babies? I don't, no. Is he, uh, he's not car shield, is he? No. Ice T is the main one with car shield. Shatner is just the uh, reverse uh, mortgage. No, that's James. No, uh, that's, that's um, Tom Selleck. No, Shatler is the uh, damn travel. He's also a hundred. Huh? Isn't he also like almost a hundred? Who Shatner? William Shatner. He's 90. he's in his nineties, isn't he? Yes. I mean, didn't Star Trek no, come out? No, he's not in his. He's got to be. Yes, Star, he is. Star Trek came out fifty-five, sixty years ago. <laughs> well, that's true. Didn't it come out in like sixty-eight? Yeah, yeah. That's yeah. fifty. Well, I was in high school. Yeah. That's fifty-six yeah. years ago. Well, so if he was twenty-five, he'd be. Yeah. Way, yeah, uh, you're right. Yeah, I yeah. thought I remember yeah, reading where recently he turned 90. I could be he wrong. He is 92. <laughs> <laughs> Watch, he'll be running for president in 28. Would <laughs> well, you vote be, for him? He'll finally be old enough. Yeah, would you vote for him, Shatner? Yeah, I'd vote for Shatner. There you go. Hello. You'll see William Shatner on the Hoopy and Abraham commercials. Yeah. Oh, that's uh, right. Yeah, you're right. That's right. That's, that's right. his big deal. That's All right. All right. Thanks, Bill. What is Hoopy and Abraham? It's a law firm. Law firm. What, what are they special? Chasers. Okay. They, yeah. uh, 
Yeah. Right. They're one of those where... Yeah, words. ambulance chasers. <laughs> okay. On to the Hawks. Uh, allegedly. Allegedly. <laughs> yeah. Hello. I like the car shield ad where they have uh, the group of guys together. They have uh, Alan Iverson and uh, right. my favorite is Ric Flair. Yeah, that's right. That's right. That's the best one. I they I have seen that one. Alan Iverson and Ric Flair. Yeah. <laughs> hey, good, good job, guys. Thanks. thanks. Good for Alan Iverson. Be Who the little... hell is Ric Flair? All star wrestler. Oh, oh yeah. Yeah. I sent you uh, an article. Uh, texted you an article on wrestling yesterday. Uh -huh, I don't remember getting it. Yeah. You you texted it or emailed it? I texted. Oh, uh, I'll link. have to check. Okay. On on what's it about? Um, all Star Wrestling? Yeah. Yeah, because I'm such a big fan. All Star Wrestling. Yeah, I'm just, I, <laughs> they haven't called it All Star. Well, that just shows I'm just not a fan. I just have never. What's it called? I think you would find this interesting. What's it called now? Uh, uh, w. Uh, I always call it All Star Wrestling. Yeah. I think back to Vets Auditorium, Rufus R. Jones. Yeah. It's Crusher, like, the Bruiser. Haystack Calhoun. We've talked about him <laughs> many times on this Calhoun, show. Jesus. We've talked about him many times My on this show. My grandfather used to watch Haystack. Yep, Haystack Calhoun. Didn't he? He used to wrestle in overalls, and people would bounce off him. Yeah, he'd stand in the ring. He wouldn't really move. And then people would and bounce people off him, would... then he'd smother him. Yeah. <laughs> he, he Boy, like, that sounds riveting. He weighed like 600 pounds. He was massive. And he'd just stand there. And his nickname was Haystack. Yeah. What a great I'm that's guessing great name. he... Didn't live to be a, a ripe old age. I, we looked this up before. We're, we've done this. Do it again. Remember. Yeah, we've done this. We've done this maybe two or three times. Hey. This is like deja vu. Haystack. Who ended up winning that LSU South Carolina game? South Carolina. Okay, I thought right. Um, I watched I, that whole game when they were. I when I turned it on, they were down by three, but they were coming on. You could tell the momentum was shifting. God, Moki is just fifty-five. He died at 55? He was 6'4 and weighed 602 pounds. <laughs> he he could be on that show, 600-pound sisters. He had diabetes. Oh, gee, there's, huh. a, there's a shock. He, he, could, uh, he needs Jardians. <laughs> yeah. They got a new Jardians girl. Have you noticed that? Yeah. There's a different one. I like the other one better. She looked happier and heavier. The well, other she one. was heavier. And you, happier. You know the scariest thing about uh, Mulkey last night? Her, her outfit, outfit? The one with Coca-Cola. Coca-Cola on yeah. it. She had, it was, my God. she is a freak show. Yeah. I mean, she's just, I mean, she's so full how, of How much she do you suppose Coca-Cola is paying her for that? A decent 100, amount. A decent and amount. But it's just, so manic. It's just, I don't know. I just thought that was kind of sickening. I did too. I, that's a step too far. We're going to start having a day where the players are wearing low. I mean, you imagine if Caitlin Clark could wear advertisements on her uniform? Is that, yeah, is I that mean, next? Well, probably. I mean, that's NASCAR. To me, yeah, but. Uh, I don't, I don't know. I I, I hope, I hope not. I hope it doesn't get to that. I, I do too. I want them to make money, but there's got to be some standard of yes, that is still college. But she's just yeah. But she is so manic. It's just I don't know. Don Staley. Some someone asked her uh, about the crowd, and she's like, "Well, yeah." I and mean, the crowd was obviously they liked me. They were um, off the whole game long. They were cheering me on and calling me boo. <laughs> I thought that was pretty, I thought that was a good answer. That was a good answer. So, and obviously we were talking earlier. You saw the Doctorman's tweet. Yes. Uh, somebody Scott knows took a photo of Kirk Ferentz interviewing or talking with this Kevin Johns guy over at the hotel right across the street from the stadium, and Doctorman put it up on Twitter, which I think is funny in the, the world we live. Well, and, and someone shared it on one of the message boards. That's how oh, I'm sure. It, and I mean, once it hit Twitter, I and mean, here's let me see what. Scott, I mean, he didn't act like it was breaking news. He kind of had fun with it. Maybe Kirk Ferentz's meeting with former Duke OC Kevin Johns this morning will finally produce white smoke from Casa Kinnick, <laughs> sent from a longtime friend at the courtyard across from Kinnick. Hmm. And I just, I saw that and I just laughed. And I wrote about him. I've been told, and this is all secondhand, none of this is, it's that he was the, the last to interview. Sounds like four or five interviews. I think we're going to hear something today or early next week. That's just my well. That would be great. Kind of what I've been told, and some of my colleagues are kind of hearing the same stuff. And um, if it ends up being Kevin Johns, I wouldn't. I mean, he's obviously qualified. My one issue, and I'm sure Kirk. One of the first things Kirk's would ask, and I'm guessing Kirk calls Mike Elko. Why did Mike Elko not take him with him? To Texas well, a, a decent, he hired Colin Klein, who's a, who's a question. rising star. But Colin Klein's not near as near as experienced as this guy, and they were already together. To me, that's kind of a red flag. I don't, 
I mean, if there is one, because qualify his resume is fine. He's maybe from, they didn't get along. I mean, maybe they weren't a perfect. Okay, match. then that's a concern. And then that you know, and I'm guessing Kirk, my, I'm guessing Kirk, if he's this serious about hiring Kevin Johns, I'm guessing there's a phone call with Mike Elko just. And it'll be interesting to see. Don't you find it a little peculiar, though, that he didn't? I mean, they were really successful together at Duke. These last two seasons, were they averaged 33 points a game. Mm-hmm. And he didn't take him to Texas A&M. He hired a guy from Kansas State who, Colin, you remember, Colin Klein's yeah. a rising coach, but he's yeah, not absolutely. that old. I remember him as a player not that long mm-hmm. ago. So, I mean, Kevin Johns is almost 50. It just looks weird if there is well, any type of red I'm play. Sure there's a... there's, there's got to be an explanation. Yes. So... And, if, and if Kirk is comfortable with the explanation – then we may see that if he hires this guy. Now, he may not hire that guy, but it may have nothing to do with that either. I don't want right. it to think that if Kirk ends up not hiring Kevin Johns, it's because of something he heard from Mike Elko. I just find that weird that they did. Because so often when these coaches that rebuild a tough program, they usually take most a lot of their staff with them. And especially the coordinator, it seems like, unless the coordinator stays and becomes the head coach. Who, who got the Duke job? I I'm not sure. I can't remember. I can't did. remember. But so, maybe Johns didn't want to go back to Texas. I, I, I don't know. I, but all I know is he's unemployed. Yes. You yes. know, and to me, that's a red flag. Hello. Hello, guys. Hello. Uh, did you see what Caitlin Clark's signed basketball card sold for? I think $21,000 or something like that. Sixty-eight. Oh, 68000 okay. 68000 well, Oh, the it. second, well, the second that highest was a charity one. deal or what it was. Damn, my sixty-five thousand dollar bid was uh, was overbid. Well, Damn. I think what I read was that her card is now valued just, be, you know, just on the market at like some twenty thousand dollars, something like that. It was the highest. I I thought that's what I read on Twitter, but yeah, that's. I mean, it's for a charity, so obviously you're going to maybe spend even a little more for money. That's great though that she can do that yeah. for for charity. No, more power. I'm sure to the one the Caitlin card that I have is probably worth absolutely nothing. Yeah, I've never I don't have any cards. Is it signed? <laughs> I don't know. I never collected cards as a kid. I got it on online for five bucks or something <laughs> when she was a freshman. So I'm sure. I think the highest is that one of the Williams tennis players mm-hmm. sold for like two hundred sixty-eight thousand. <laughs> that people got more money I, than cents, you what know. A waste of money. <laughs> Well, if you've got a yeah, hundred, if it's charity and you got, well, uh, well yeah, if, that, if, if, that's, right if it's charity, off. I get it. I didn't know that was charity. I thought that was just something. Yeah, if you got a billion dollars, that's nothing. Yeah, sure, if it's charity, great. Yeah, don't write it off. Okay, guys, go hawk. Hey, thanks for the call. But yeah, I mean, like I said, I Kevin Johns, if he's qualified, he's been to multiple places. He coached at Indiana, Duke. I mean, he's been to a lot of different places. He's coached running back, Texas receivers. Tech. Yeah, he was there for one year, I think. He's been to a lot. I mean, he's moved around a lot. He's at Northwestern. Um, And I'm guessing Kirk probably got some input from Pat Fitzgerald on that. I would imagine. So he's obviously in the thick of it, and um, I just find it it weird that they were across the street at the coffee shop. Um, Yeah, maybe maybe I'm reading too much into it. I mean, obviously he's interviewing, and he's going to interview different than, like we said, I would believe an interview with Kevin Johns for Kirk would be different than with Chris and Joel. So much of Kevin Johns, there's got to be a get acquainting period. Get to, you know, yeah. I mean, he doesn't need to do that with Phil, especially Philbin. I mean, that, that, I don't know how formal that interview would have to be, assuming they ever did interview. And the same with Paul Chris. Kirk knows him really well. Yeah. This would be a whole different process. There's a, and and so, so we'll see. I mean, would I be shocked if Kevin Johns was announced as the coordinator today or Monday? To, no, I, I wouldn't. Would I be shocked if Phil would? No. Chris now, he has since said he's no longer in the running. That would be surprising. But neither Philbin nor Johns would shock me. So we'll just have to wait and see. And I think Any other names you've heard? Well, there was the... The, the Bears guy? Well, that, I, yeah, but I don't know how, what's his name, Teskey? Yeah, something yeah, like that. Yeah, I don't that. know how, I mean, a lot of it is just people throwing out names. Oh, for sure. The UNLV guy, I I think he may have had some contact or maybe even a, a for, I mean, because obviously you got to go through the protocol. you got to interview, I so believe, at least four coaches. you got to interview a minority. A minority. He could have yeah. been in my minority interview because his name popped up and it was around for about three to five days, and maybe that's when um, he interviewed and then, he, his name kind of dropped, faded away. So you can assume that, well, his interview's in the past now. So we'll see. So like I said, I just find it funny that they were, that someone took a photo of them having coffee. At the hotel. I know it's like Watergate. <laughs> yeah. 
Is, are, do we have a guest? That is, no, um, um, Holuska is coming on nine fifteen on Monday. Okay. He couldn't do today. All right, I, he couldn't do today, and um, really can't have any football guests on right now. Who, who are we going to have? Thought about having. I wouldn't mind having Don on again once they make this decision. Get Don's get Don's thoughts, but it's kind of hard to have Don on and talk about it now because we already have. And what are we going to say? Yeah. I mean, it's been very tight lipped. What's funny, though, is it's been very tight-lipped, and, and then yet there they are right out in the hotel, right out in the middle of public. I mean, not hiding from anybody. Well, and sometimes on these things, they, they meet in, uh, you know, Memphis or something, you know, well, that's, someplace oh, away from either of their... Yes. And I'm guessing, like, if Kirk did do a sit-down with Joe Feldman, I'd be surprised if it was here. I could see that being Kirk going to see him, but who knows? I mean, it's just... But I think each interview is unique in itself, and... And like we said, I just think Kirk's interview with someone like Philbin would be different because there'd be so much that Kirk wouldn't have to do with Joe because they're friends. They know each other, you know, so. But now maybe this, the one thing that I would like about this is because part of me does want Kirk to reach outside of his family. Yeah. My biggest thing with Philbin is that he seems like he would just be a convenient, comfortable Higher of just more of the same, you know, they they respect each other. Philbin's obviously a good coach. But to me, it would symbolize just digging your heels in even deeper. Maybe Kevin Johns, I mean, Duke's offense was a lot different than Iowa's. Oh, but yeah. Yeah. different personnel, too. I mean, not not saying they were better, but different skill players. And, I mean, it'll be interesting to see how much of, if Kevin Johns is the guy, what kind of offense he ran at Duke compared to what Kirk should have let him run here. Well, if he if he's the higher, obviously we'll see, and uh, it, you, you can't be any worse than the worst, which is where what we were. But I'm talking style. Yeah, I know. I think there's this hope that whoever they hire come next fall, it's going to look a lot different, and it's not. It's going to be the same offense. You just hope it's better. It's going to be the same offense. The offense has hardly changed at all in 25 years. He's tinkered with it at times, but it's going to be the same offense. And it can look different. The offense in 2002 looked a lot different than the offense these last two years, but it was still the same offense. I mean, just because it's the same offense doesn't mean it can't work. But these last two years, they just have not had the right personnel. They just haven't right, had the right pieces. Apparently, I mean, that's what it's got. Because Brian's not – Brian didn't do anything much different than what Ken and Greg Davis did. No. Same offense. It's just been getting worse. It's like maybe teams have caught up to what they're doing – Iowa hasn't done a lot. They don't do a lot of adjustments. And also when they can't run the ball, that's a major problem for them. So so many times their recipe for defeat, especially against good teams, is they can't run the ball and everything else unravels on offense. And yeah. Yeah. so it's hard to run with five five or six blockers and, and eight guys opposite. The one thing I like about Philbin is they got to be a really pretty good running team when he was here, and the offensive line was really good when he was here. Really good. Really good. If he could fix that element, because Kevin Johns, I don't believe his coach, he has no offensive. That's the one area I don't believe where he offensive has Offensive line? Yeah, I, don't no. think, I didn't see. He has no offensive line None. experience. And so, I mean, you could either or. If it's one of those two, I, I, like I said, it's not, I'm not going to rip either one. And nor should you. I mean, Kirk's not going to hire – he's not going to hire some bum off the street. But, like I said – I, I just it, it, I, if we do get Kevin in an, in a press conference, it, I think a fair question, a tough question would be like, you know, why didn't you go with Mike? Well, did you did you not want to, or did he not want you? Can you kind of explain? Because that's just been it's I, that's the one that's thing. That's a that, good question. That's the one thing that just sticks with me with him. I mean, he's unemployed. Yeah. And what's weird is if let's say Chris Philbin and Kevin Johns were the three mainstays to a. Both of those guys are kind of in transitional jobs, wouldn't you say, Chris and Philbin? Sure, they're analysts and, and, and Kevin, not coaches. And Kevin Johns is unemployed. Yes. That, no. Do you find that interesting? Um, yeah. Do you find that a little bothersome, worrisome? Um, a little. Yeah, I do. Yeah. I don't want to be a negative no. no. But like I said, I don't think either one of us also had. I don't think you had super, super high expectations that Kirk was gonna is gonna hire some some rising superstar, and and some gambler, uh, you know, some well, sharpshooter. Well, just some young basketball on grass. Yeah, no, I mean Kevin Johns is almost fifty years old. He's yeah. been around a long time, and 
But we'll see. I mean, it's going to be interesting. It'll just be nice to get it over with. I mean, the longer this thing goes on, I've had a couple of people tell me the longer it goes on, the less interested they are. They're just, uh, they, you know, they're. I'm tired of it, to be honest, I, because yeah. it's, because there's been no information and it's all but speculation. It, but in fairness, though, it's not Kirk's responsibility to give us information. No, it's not. I guess it's our responsibility to try to get it, but it's, I mean, you can't be... Well, and how, how did you get it today? Well, because... <laughs> so, yeah. Well, I've made a few phone calls and talked to some people who are closer to the people that matter than I am. Yeah. And they're the ones, I mean, I had been told yesterday, and I wrote something two days ago, Kevin Johns was interviewing. I, I, I felt pretty comfortable on that. Now we've seen it. I mean, hell, that not even, that may not even have been the interview. That may have just been them having coffee, maybe him getting ready to leave or whatever. But, no, my guess is he's interviewed, he's toured the facility and whatever. But someone like Joe Philbin wouldn't have to tour the facility. No. You, you know, and so it's going to be interesting to see. But I think we're about there. And that's the other thing I've been told, that it's close. It's really close to being um, – done and well, that's good so i'm tired of hearing about it frankly or not well, hearing about I'm, it. i think people are more tired of not hearing about yeah. it. i think if this is one of these things where iowa football announces hey so-and-so just came in to interview he's our fourth candidate um remember when schools used to do that for like oh, it, yes ad jobs and stuff like yeah. that um i think fans would be more understanding but this is just there's been nothing none of us in the media have been able to find anything of any concrete credible substance there just hasn't been it's all been i mean that thing i tweeted about joe philbin i even said this was secondhand it, yeah, but you i told you who yeah. it came from these were pretty good sources uh -huh. that he had agreed but that was a long time ago and then we started saying if that was the case why is this still taking this well we're figuring out i mean kirk's still interviewing i mean this yeah. this thing this photo this is was proof he's well, still in that photo was from today or yesterday i think today okay yeah i mean yeah i think it was from this morning he's still interviewing yeah. So all that stuff we're hearing about, yeah, the process is still going, that's all been true. Yep. So, and Kirk's working at his own pace, and, you know, that's his prerogative. And But I, like I said, I'd be surprised if we don't have this thing announced by at least next Wednesday. Wouldn't surprise me if it happens today. I hope it does. And there's always a chance, the fact that John's is here, maybe he agrees to it, he and Kirk shake on it, and I haven't seen anything. Who knows? Maybe there's a release. Maybe there's a release. Already? In the in the works. I mean, well, yeah, there's going to be a release at some point, and then I just wonder if they're going to do OC and receiver at the same time, or if they'll get the OC in first and we get the receiver a week or two later. So, but no, it's going to be, it'll be um, interesting to see where they go. I guess uh, some of the things about Johns that I've liked, he's coached quarterbacks extensively, and we've had problems with, I think, with quarterback development and wide receivers. He's spent a lot of time coaching them as well, so. Uh, those are two of our weak points, so I think that would be nice. That would be great. Yeah, that was um, – um, yeah, and he's also coached running backs. Yeah. Yep. 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 So how about you, Cap? Gaten, what you think? Gaten just tweeted me and said Kirk was unemployed when we hired him. He and Belichick had been fired by the Browns. No, he was no, coach Kirk, at Maine, Kirk wasn't was coaching, he? No, he was coaching the Ravens. He was offensive line for Jonathan Ogden and the Ravens when he came to Iowa, I, I believe. I don't know. Yeah, well, I do. He coached at Maine in 90, 91, and 92. Then he went to Cleveland, and then he went to the Ravens. I don't believe he was unemployed. I think he was the Ravens offensive line coach when, when Iowa hired him. Gaines just trying to start trouble. He's stirring up. Yeah. He's stirring the pot. Yeah, Gaines. What was that Valerie Bertinelli uh, interview? What Valerie Bertinelli interview? And what are you what talking about? I asked for. He said, oh, you, he what said do he, you need? Oh, he said he was going to try to get her on? See, have no. He never said it, but I asked for it. See, have coffee with Valerie from time I to time? I believe that they're very close. Uh -huh. Steve Stone. Steve, yeah. Yeah, Mike sent me a, a thing that my dad narrated the other day when I was at the basketball game. <laughs> he sent me a thing that I had not heard before. And it's good because some of the clips I've seen before, the, my dad's voice didn't sound like I remember it. Mm -hmm. But this one did. Mm. So it was very That's nice. That's cool. That's cool. Yeah. 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 Boy, that basketball yeah, game. You could <laughs> send me a, a recording of my mother yelling. <laughs> That basketball game was not good, but the people no, saying that Fran should be fired are oh, delusional, Jesus. clueless. They're just not being fair. They're a prisoner of the moment. I get you're frustrated. 
That was a bad loss. It sure was. Uh, it was a bad Game loss. should have won. Yeah, I yeah, should have won. I still don't think Maryland's that great. I mean, Jameer uh, Young is really good. Yes, he is. Um, but, man, that defense on that last play, letting him go to his left like that, I mean, it was just not. And he just went straight yeah. to the hoop. Uh, chat room's agreeing with you, Pat. Um, on what? Coaching, on what? Coaching at Maine when they hired him. No, he wasn't coaching at Maine. Oh, they didn't. No, he was he was the coach at Maine for three years from ninety ninety one ninety two. He then went to Cleveland with Belichick, but then he I believe he went to the Ravens and was coaching Jonathan Ogden at the time when Iowa hired him in after the ninety eight season. Hello, hello. <clears throat> the last time I remember he was with the Ravens because I know my brother who comes from Cleveland hated the Ravens because they used to be the Browns and <clears throat> he was talking about oh no we're not going to get a guy from the Ravens. So I remember, I remember that he was with the Ravens. But also, does the offensive coordinator have to have an interview with Beth Gibbs? Well, I, mean, I wouldn't think so. I don't know if I, I don't wouldn't think so. Beth will have to sign off on the yeah. hire, like they do with anything. But I don't know if they have. I don't know if they have to actually sit down and do an interview together. But she would have to approve it, and oh, I'm okay. sure there's. But I don't quote. I don't know for sure. Maybe she does. Who knows? I don't think none of us know for sure. <laughs> Ferentz, uh, according to Wikipedia, head football coach, University of Maine, 1992, then assistant coach with the Cleveland Browns and the Baltimore Ravens yeah. and then Iowa. And yeah. then when he left the Ravens, the personnel guy said, never more, yeah. you know, never have them again. Now, do you Get think it? having that Owen <laughs> Freeman yeah. foul out didn't help Iowa's chances on – the other night. No, it didn't help. <laughs> but sure. then they couldn't, they couldn't make a basket in the last five minutes. That is a little more and than that. And they led 33 minutes. minutes, and Maryland only led for three. And yep, that kind well, of makes the ones it that mattered. Yeah. They led the ones that mattered. Oh, and remember, tonight the gymnastics have a meet. Yeah. At uh, Extreme Arena, and also uh, wrestling will be on TV. Yeah, oh, wrestlers on so Big Ten on. Network at eight. Yep. Okay, doke guys. Well, take care. Is the weather supposed to be bad tonight, or is it okay? No, it's nope. the weather treacherous. Is fine. <laughs> oh, no, stop just, it. Get under your bed and cry, <laughs> and just hide I have and pray. To be out in it. Lows around thirty-four tonight. Uh, cloudy. Might be a little patchy fog, but no big deal. Uh, okay. Not at least tonight. Because uh, I have to be out in it. You will be fine. You'll be fine. So no hiding and no praying? Is that what you're saying? Yeah. Well, you can always pray. Oh, that's yeah. true. Yeah. That's true. <laughs> okay, good night. Thanks, Karen. <laughs> can so, you imagine how pissed off we'd be if these last three days had been? Yes. I would have given up. I would, too. I think I would have given up and, and hired people. Well, no, I this, it, this has been. I don't think I could have kept shoveling. My, I've. I woke. I went for a walk yesterday for the first time in a long time because it's just been three weeks. And man, I, I, you're using when you ride an exercise bike or you shovel, you're using different muscles. Yeah. Man, my back was bugging me. I mean, these last three weeks, I probably shoveled twelve to. I couldn't it's keep ridiculous. doing it. I, I couldn't keep doing it. Friends invited, wished me a happy birthday. Hey, nice. Yeah. But yeah, I um, and it is amazing how much slowly melting there's been. I mean, there's yeah. so much less snow just, just even it's right amazing. out here. No, even, just right out sure. there because, I mean, it's, it, but that's been good. It's been kind of a steady decline. You know, even the stuff. I still got a decent amount on my roof, but it's starting to finally come off too. But, but yeah, no, we're lucky. I mean, it's, I mean, it's what is it, almost 40 degrees? Uh, it's 36. It's 36 right now. Think about that. That's pretty good. See what weather bug How says. How know it's my birthday? Who, I, Joe I Biden? Know. Yeah. They, they know everything. Yeah, I wouldn't I wouldn't know. But um what's weather bugs say? Um, It'll say like thirty nine. My my phone is weather channel and says thirty five. Bug says thirty six. He's a little more optimistic. A little more optimistic as usual. And our weather station says. But yeah, I mean, if think if this was, if it was twenty six right now. But also, I thought we were going to get a lot more. We haven't had a ton of rain. I mean, we've had we a did oh, last night, but we haven't had. I mean, they made it sound eighty percent change. It's been a steady. It hasn't been the any downpour. Dog came in soaked, and man, I, yeah, that smell. Oh, I hate it when. Yeah, there's yeah. nothing worse than when and dogs then of get course, wet. She wants to hug me. Yeah, I don't. Yeah. That's one of the few things I don't miss about having uh, dogs is 
Well, my dogs didn't like to get wet either. They weren't idiots. Yeah, I dried her off. If it was lot, raining. But, I mean, she got a lot of fur. I remember there would be times where I'd want them to go out and go to the restroom, for the, and it would be raining, and they'd look at me and like, no, we're, no, <laughs> we're not going outside. We're just not well, doing it. We'll hold it. She they didn't doesn't like the slush. She likes the snow like when, it it's, when it's hard, but when it's, when it's like this, she don't care for it. Your driveway's kind of a, it's no longer an ice rink. Now it's kind of a slushy, it's dirty, just nasty, nasty yeah. Yeah. pot pitted. It's got a bunch of holes in it. Thirty years, thirty years of this. Yeah, so, I don't know what to tell you. Thirty uh, years here, here in Iowa City. Yeah, I can one up you. I've been here thirty three. I one up you. I went to school here in 67. I've been here since 1957. Yeah, he went up to it. <laughs> yeah, but I went to school, and you know what I did? I graduated. So well, I just went up to you. Well, well, aren't you special? Yeah. I went up to you. Well, I uh, didn't graduate. And now look at you. you the world is your, the world is, <laughs> I own a business. Yeah. Wild well, well, in Bangkok and the world. I own two. Oyster. Well, aren't well, you something? Thanks, thanks partly. Well, I have a Sony television and all the apps. And all the streaming You got me services. there. I have a Samsung. Yeah. But now I say I own the businesses, but I have to, with a little help from family. I mean, well, I, I'm, well, I'm not like, I'm not like. Ain't in this, nothing wrong with that. I'm not in this alone, put it that well, way. No, I'm not in this alone either. I yeah. own a lot of people. <laughs> well, I don't know anything. Which is why I, I don't know anything like you do. What I'm saying is I couldn't have done it without financial support. But it's not easy opening up. It's nor is it cheap opening up websites and uh-uh. and the and unfortunately what I'm learning is the more traffic you get, the more expensive it is yeah, for the right. company to host your website. You bet. I'm hearing well the, with the same thing with uh, with the 99 plus KFMH. The more listeners we get. The uh, the more it costs us to. Well, our hosting fees have quadrupled in the last three years. Well, I, I keep telling. And I love our company. I'm not I'm not bad mouthing our company, but they've explained it to me. They're like, you have so much traffic, so many photos, so much content. It takes up what is it, gigabytes and all. Whatever. They explained to me how it works, and you know, it is what it is. Well, that's why I discourage people from listening. <laughs> it's but see, and we ultimately our goal is to get as much traffic as we can because sure. that's how we get advertisers. Yeah. Hey, look at all the traffic we have. You're, you know, and we don't have Google ads and whatever, so they get even more display. But, but yeah, no, it's that's the one thing. It's kind of a double edged sword. You want the traffic, but it's going to cost you. Well, um, you're part of the morning show, so I can bring this up and part to you know give you some thanks for it too. We ended up locals uh, love us dot com the survey. We are number one in fourteen of sixteen uh, categories after forty one hundred responses, uh, and we're number one in males, number one in females, uh, number one uh, forty, fifty, sixty, seventy year olds, uh, number one in. Uh, People with any kind of money. Yeah, any kind of money, all the way up past a hundred thousand. We're uh, uh, we're the no, best. We're the number one station too. Who's number so, two? Uh, KZIA and wh- in Cedar Rapids. Is that people or a computer? It's people. Who's number two here in town? Well, KZIA. Oh, okay. Yeah. So number three is KHAK. So. So there you go. Yeah. Number one, 14 out of 16 categories yeah. morning show. So, congratulations, Pat. And look what it, and what's it get me? <laughs> I'm paying you. Yeah, you are. <laughs> what's it get me? What's it gets it us, me? by talking about it, hopefully it gets us <laughs> more sponsors. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, your challenge is to get more advertisers. Yes. Yeah. There and you so go. is yours. Yeah, it's a challenge. Yeah. Talked about your uh, site, and I could just come in there and hit you over the head. Yep. With a husasa, <laughs> yeah, a real big husasa. <laughs> but yeah, no, our traffic. Like I said, we we our traffic doubled from twenty two to twenty three. Yeah, and, that's uh, good. No, that's real good. And I think a lot of it's you know our content's good, but it's easy reading too. Because God, I was trying to read a story. Oh, I don't know what site it was on, and I just, I mean, I I, I got dizzy. It's annoying. With all the stuff that pops up in there that you're reading, all of a sudden there's this big ad, and next thing you know, it, the ad is placed, and then you're back up three paragraphs that you've already read. You know, and it's, it's just... I, I find it uh, very entertaining. 
Uh, and and really, because you're back up there, you might have missed some. So it forces you to reread it. It drives me insane. That's the way I look at it, making money off of <laughs> oh, I, oh, oh, that's right. I forgot you guys have, have crossed over the line. We have. <laughs> yeah, we and now we've crossed over the line. Google's the greatest thing in the world. Next yeah. payment is five days from now. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I know. I'm yeah. Like I said, I'm turning down some decent amount of... I think with our traffic, I think we'd get a nice check from... I imagine you will. But oh, yeah. like right now, I don't want to do it just because yeah. I... Yeah. I, it's just, and maybe I will down the road, especially if the advertisers don't care. But, I mean... I just right now, y'all, you never say you don't need it, but right now I'm still a little reluctant to do it. Fair enough. I understand. I was reluctant to do it uh, till that uh, first check came in. And then they took it back. <laughs> yeah, then they took back. The so if I badmouth Google. They, they paid us the wrong amount. <laughs> See, if I badmouth Google, do you think they'd pull their ads from you? So do I they'll, need to be careful? No, they'll kill you. Yeah. Yeah. So, no fan mouth. Google's a wonderful organization. It is different reading your site, though, now. I will. Yeah. Yeah, it's, and I find it, uh, again, I mean, if you miss something, yeah, there's you never nothing, know what you're There's nothing see. better than all of a sudden reading and then yeah, then getting some ad dumped right in there, and then next thing you know, where am I? Hey, where am I? We're encouraging commerce. I know you are. Yes. I know you are. Google rocks. And Kim Mulkey is, too. Oh, yeah. sure. I mean, she's making money. She's making money, and that's, I mean, but like I said, I just wait for the day when you see an Iowa football player with, like, it's coming. something on his helmet, you know? It's I'm, coming. It's. I think that's, because they're going to say, hey, yeah. if the coaches can do it, why can't we? Well, yeah. I mean, he's got it on his headphones. He's got it on, yeah. He's got it on his headphones. Yeah, I could never see Lisa Bluter doing something like that. Could you? No. I don't think she would. I don't think she would. I think a lot of coaches would just know. draw the do line they, now. Would I'm not, they have a chance? choice if the university says we're taking the money yeah i, I don't know the circumstances with Moki, but i would guess it wouldn't surprise me Moki did a lot of this on her own and yep. and then got the university to follow her lead i could be wrong i don't know i just think that's a little tacky the way she walks around it I would well she struts would, i mean she's it, she and would, she's on the court the yeah, whole game i mean seriously i would think it distracts the damn well, i think team. some of that's who you are i mean izzo's on the court a lot. i know and he shouldn't be and um, Fran's on the court a lot, but Fran also gets teed. I mean, Izzo got teed up the other The last time I was watching Michigan State, he got a technical, and he should have. He was yelling, screaming all over the court. But I do think officials do kind of respect success in a way. As much as you don't like Kim Mulkey, she's been very successful. And I do think they get sometimes the benefit of the doubt. Well, I mean, and a little more in the leeway. championship game, one of the officials almost ran into her because she was on the court. Yeah, I remember that. Uh, chat room, uh, Sega's website has gigabytes of pictures. What's that? What's, I don't get it. Sega's website, gigabyte, you were talking about. Well, it. that's what they say is what caught, what you yeah. use. That's what, how they kind of bill you is how many gigabytes yeah. you use. He explained it to me. And it yeah. was, it made sense. It just, and then when I think about it, it probably does cost their hosting company more, the more traffic you it get. Does. But that's oh, what no, our, it does. But, but that's what our goal is to get more traffic. I don't traffic. get the Seca joke. I don't either. And I he was always, ready. With, I wasn't mine. Sooner. This is going to be another one of those where a month from now, you're always bringing up Seika, and he brings her up more. I don't bring her up this anymore. This is the chat room. This I never even heard of her before. But you know. bring her up. Just you, I just was reading the chat room. But, you know, I don't care what they're saying I in the chat read, room. You always ask. What, these are. You know, I always ask what's going on. These are your people. How often do you hear me ask room. what's going on in the chat room? Are they not his people never. in the chat room? No. No, they're your people. They don't no, even like me in there. <laughs> no, no, they don't. So, no. I mean, so I mean, uh, I don't care what's going on. They don't on. like me either. <laughs> I don't really care what's going on. Why go to a place where there's just festering hate? <laughs> I mean, there's just a lot of hate and disdain in there. There's some anguish. Love. There's some love. No, there's not. There's very little love. Who in the chat room likes Pat? <laughs> Raise your hand, no, chat they, room. They like Don and Adam in the chat room, don't they? <laughs> yeah. like, the people we bring in, they're nice yeah. to them, aren't yeah. they? For the most yeah. part, the chat room doesn't like anybody. They don't even like Don and Adam? No, they Not don't really. talk bad about Don. How do you talk bad about Don and Adam? <laughs> Adam, they, 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 I think I, it, uh, yes. We're as a game. rule, the, it's a negative group of folks. Yeah, as a rule, so is the internet. Well, that's oh, true. Very much so. <laughs> I mean, like you said, that the board you've been going on, Caker's Freak Show. Uh -huh. that, 
for 25 years, that thing's filled with hate. Isn't oh, it? absolutely. I mean, like everybody, it, it's everybody needs to be fired. So if they hire this Kevin Johns guy, there'll be people ripping it on that board, won't there? Uh, yes, although there'll be a somewhat of a honeymoon period until the first three and out, and then, then it's going to start. Yeah, I mean, a lot of this is going to, no matter who they hire, it's going to depend on how much freedom Kirk gives yeah. them to put their touch on the offense. And I just don't think it's going to be a lot. I mean, I don't know why is Kirk all of a sudden going to change now because I think Kirk is determined to show that injuries were what basically led to this demise this year and that his offense still works. And if it weren't for injuries, Brian would, would have been fine. And I and I just well, don't. the injury sure didn't help. No, they didn't help, but it doesn't explain last year, no, the previous year, and it doesn't explain why over a twenty-five year run, why rarely. I would say the only year, two thousand and two and two thousand and eleven, I would say were about the only years where offense was clearly the strength of the team, and that two thousand eleven team, I believe, went seven and six, but Vandenberg threw for over three thousand yards. Mm-hmm. And that was O'Keefe's last year. 2002, the defense was really good, too, but the offense was arguably the strength of that team. That's two years out of 25. So, Not a lot. So, I mean, and like I said, I don't think all of a sudden in year 26, a new way, all of a sudden everything's just going to completely change. And I, what you can hope for, I mean, they averaged at, at Duke under this guy for the last years, I think they averaged 32.8 and 417 a game. Mm-hmm. God, if he could do that here. Oh, my God. I mean, those be... numbers in the big scheme of things are solid, but they're not like super. But here, it I mean, would be think uh, about that. unbelievable. Think about, yeah, for over 400 yards a game and averaging 32 points. I mean, I mean, people would be collapsing in the stands <laughs> out of just pure shock and amazement. Well, I mean, and, the bar has been set so low, and that's and in some ways people are like, oh, we're never going to hire anyone that uh, anyone good because it's so bad here. Well, that might appeal to somebody, especially someone unemployed. Yeah. I mean, one thing Kirk does have over Kevin Johns and is probably a little negotiating leverage, wouldn't you say? I mean, Kevin Johns is unemployed right now. Yeah. He's probably got uh, good bank accounts. I'm sure he probably does, and he's probably got some other jobs he's looking at, but. There are I don't are there a lot of coordinator power five coordinator jobs still open right now? I don't think so. I don't think there are. Uh-uh. I mean, I think this Iowa job kind of stands out right now, and it's despite what people say about Kirk's offense and how bad it's been, it's still a good job. I mean, it's still oh, for a, sure, a million and a half a year and a good stable program. And if you can do anything to help the offense, that's going to take it to another level. I mean. And, and just being average would be a miracle worker. Being av- an average offense with as good as our special teams and defense are, we're a playoff team. Yeah, I mean, especially with, especially with twelve yeah. with twelve teams getting in there. So, um, so yeah, we'll see. Like I said, I I've learned with Kirk over these years. Just when you think something's gonna, ch- just you just gotta kind of wait and see. I've, I've I just don't expect any major revolution. Evolution, revolution, revival, whatever you want to call it on offense. I think Kirk still believes we just got to do what we do better. Hello. Hey, guys, there's four offensive coordinator jobs open and one power five, and that's Iowa. Yeah, that okay. Yeah, so, so that's also, not much. No, that's not much. Yeah. And it's like Louisiana, Monroe, Hawaii. Um I don't. I mean, nobody that jumps off the table and then Iowa. So Akron is another one. Okay. So I mean, no, they're in a class by themselves yeah. right now, yeah. and so I mean, so you could argue well that that should make it to where they would get even better candidates interviewing for the job. And so I don't know. I'm not going to judge Kevin Johns just because he's unemployed right now. But I, like I said, I still think it's odd that he it, didn't go with Elko. My my and um, I'll. So my uh, my I have an uncle that's had season tickets for Kansas State football for 34 years, and um, they were saying the rumors down at K State are that when that dude took the Texas A&M job, Mike Elko, yep, that the boosters uh, told him your staff is already in place. We got Colin Klein to come from K State, and we. Got his salary and everything's figured out. That's who we want. Okay, I get and that, but why? Didn't... Why would they value Colin Klein so much over the guy? That's what I don't understand. Yeah, I don't either. But I that's um, like the A and M people. You know, they just think they no, they're they're like a cult. They... And why would you, <laughs> yeah. if you're a head coach, why would you want your boosters and administration picking your coordinator? 
That just seems bizarre. Yeah, I, I don't know, but there's it, been a lot of bizarre things going on down there. No, I had been told enough. for sure. I had heard, and now that he said it, that um, one of the things with Texas A and M is they didn't think Kevin Johns was a big enough name, wasn't a big enough. Yeah. And yeah. okay, but and I get Colin Klein, but is really Colin Klein a? I mean, he was a good quarterback at Kansas State. He's shown potential, but it's I don't know. I mean. I, I don't get it. I just find it weird. And that's weird, though. The, you imagine Kirk Ferentz taking a job and someone telling him who his coordinator is going to be? He would never do that. But you're right, though. Texas A&M is a different. It sure is. It's just a different community. Down. I mean, I how mean, much did Nebraska they pay Jimbo to, do that too, guys. to uh, leave? Oh, he, I mean, his, his whole buyout. Wasn't it $90 million? $90 million, something like that, yeah. Yeah, Nebraska did the same thing. I mean, they were trying to <clears throat> tell coaches that, like, if – if, if you're going to take the job, you know, Mickey Joseph's going to be here on the staff. And, uh, see, I just think that's not good. I think the Dominic coach... Rayola is going to be on the staff because he's a, he's a former player, a Husker great, and all that. Some, some of these schools are, are starting to do that. Now, so. when Kirk took over, Chuck Long and Brett Bielema, I mean, but I'm guessing Kirk agreed to that. I don't think, I, I can't imagine Bowlesby and them told Kirk who's going to be. You know, hey, these guys were here, and we want them. Yeah. I'm sure they worked it out together. But, yeah, Texas A&M is just – that's a whole different world down there. Yeah, I, and I don't know much. I have I watched a couple things, uh, videos and stuff about this Kevin Johns, and he, he – they said that he's used uh, double tight ends, and he's – Yeah, I mean – He's more run than he is past, so, I mean, he – I mean, I watched Duke play this year, but the thing with Duke, Duke had a really good quarterback. And ACC defenses aren't the same as Big Ten defenses. For They're sure. not as good. So, um, but, yeah, I mean, Kevin Johns definitely has the qualifications. I mean, his resume, I mean, it speaks for itself. He's more than qualified for this job, as is Joe Philbin, as is probably anybody Kirk is interviewing. I don't think Kirk's interviewing anybody that's underqualified. In anything, and I'm just, I'll leave you guys with this, what you guys just said, it, it really can't get any worse. So, <laughs> well, it could, I mean, but it's the yeah. the margin for error to get worse is getting narrower because they're so bad right now. I mean, what are they going to? I mean, they're going to have some games where they have absolutely no yards. I mean, we've had games where they've had like forty yards rushing. I mean, it could get worse, but you'd like to think this is the well. It can't pit. get worse than the worst. Well, they could average less yards. Yes, they could. That's what I'm saying. And yeah, they, yeah, they could average fewer yards. If, if he would get Iowa, I mean. I mean, and it, this is not good, but this is, I mean, if he got Iowa to 90th, you'd be like, that's Well, that'd be a 40 air, team. Man. That'd be 40 steps up. Yes, that would be. And that wouldn't even be average. No. I mean, no. 70 to me would be about average. And if he did got him up 70, that would be 60. That would be a 60-team improvement, a yeah. jump of 60. I'm thinking about that's how and bad. And there'd still be 69 teams better. That are better. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So, like I said, there's not a real high bar set. No. All right, guys, have a good one. Thanks for the call. There yeah. is one guy in the chat room that says you're cool. Yeah? Yes. Oh, that's – and the, what are the others saying? Uh, where's the tar? Where's the feather? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> we got to take a break. Okay. <laughs> we'll be right back. 1-800-800-ROSE 1-800-800-ROSE Your FTD florist is the only number you need to know to send flowers anywhere in the country or Canada from anywhere in the country 1-800-800-ROSE It's so easy, just remember one number 1-800-800-ROSE Your FTD florist 1-800-800-ROSE Remember... For a gift that your loved one will treasure for a lifetime, find it at our family-owned jewelry store in Iowa City, Pertine and Stocker Jewelers. We can show you diamond engagement rings, colored stones, fashion jewelry, and watches. Our jewelers are on site, so we can design jewelry for that special person in your life. We are Hertine and Stocker, serving Iowa City and the surrounding area for three generations. Hertine and Stocker Jewelers, downtown Iowa City, and HertineandStockerJewelers.com. Ask for Willa, Terry, Tim, or Kate. One of us is always there. 
Don't wait for an emergency to get a backup for your car keys. Unlike the olden days, car keys have gotten extremely complex. Mike's eKeys for Cars can generate the most technically advanced automotive keys that are on the market today. For spares and lost keys, Mike's eKeys for Cars can produce most conventional transponder, high security, and remote head keys. Mike's eKeys for Cars will keep you on the road. Call 319-330-9185 and schedule an appointment today. Don't wait until it's too late. Call 319-330-9185. 319-330-9185 today. Are you tired of living in a home that doesn't quite meet your needs? Then it's time to call the experts at Streets Maintenance. Their team of skilled professionals specializes in renovations and remodeling, transforming your home into the space you've always dreamed of. From kitchen bath remodels to complete home renovations, no job is too big or too small. Streets Maintenance will work with you every step of the way to ensure your vision becomes a reality. So don't wait any longer. Call Streets Maintenance to schedule your consultation at 400-4483. Let's start building your dream home today. Once upon a time in the land of the Hawkeyes, a business grew. A business that would become synonymous with real estate. Hi, I'm Steve Anderson of Hawkeye Title and Settlement. When you're buying or selling your home, you'll need title and settlement services. Consider the Hawkeye Title and Settlement team. Give us a call at 351-8600. Hawkeye Title and Settlement, the team you love, the people you trust. Don't let just anyone take care of your smile. At Diamond Dental, you can expect compassion, expertise, and a personalized care plan to protect your teeth for life. With more than 30 years of combined experience, Dr. Forbes and his staff are prepared to tackle even your toughest dental problems, leaving your smile healthy and sparkling. Diamond Dental offers a full range of general and cosmetic dentistry, as well as dental treatment options for snoring and sleep apnea. It's never too early to start thinking about what's best for your smile. Schedule an appointment today by calling 319. 390-3703 390-3703 or visiting the office at 5815 Consul Street Northeast, Suite D1 in Cedar Rapids. You can also visit DiamondDentalPC.com for more information. Dr. Forbes is a proud sponsor of the Hawkeye Wrestling Club and the Inner Circle. Let the Diamond Dental team provide superior care for your entire family. Car won't go into gear? Call Premier. Premier Automotive in North Liberty offers full-service mechanical auto repair, in addition to being Eastern Iowa's most trusted name in auto body repair. Use Premier for all your auto repair needs, brakes, oil changes, air conditioning, diagnostics, transmissions, or preventative maintenance. Whether you hit a deer or your car won't go into gear, see Premier Automotive in North Liberty. When you go to a family restaurant, you want three things. One, a wide selection of breakfast, lunch, and dinner items. Two, you want those selections to be affordable and delicious. And three, you want to be treated like family. You get all three at the Midtown Family Restaurant. Breakfast items available anytime the doors are open. Legendary tenderloins, onion rings, and hot roast beef sandwiches. And special ribeye and shrimp nights. Daily specials at each location. And no matter if you're coming in solo or with a group of 20, you get the same special family treatment. The Midtown Family Restaurants at Court and Scott streets and at the walmart plaza on highway one west follow them on facebook or at midtownfamily.com the family's waiting for gt you. car owner of Supel's building and remodeling has been offering unmatched service and quality for over 25 years the trained professionals at Supel's building and remodeling will install and guarantee the products used in any job no matter how big or small they also stand behind their work and offer no nonsense exceptional customer service from design to completion and beyond whether it's a simple window replacement or a major house Edition. You'll have the confidence that Suples Building and Remodeling is committed to quality. Visit Suples.net or call them today at 319 337 2246. Siri Brothers Ford Winter Clearance Event. Warm up to these hot deals. Get a new 2023 Ford F 150 XLT Crew Cab. Up to 6000 off MSRP. Plus 1.9% financing for 72 months. Get a new 2023 Ford Bronco Sport 1500 rebate. Plus 1.9% financing for 66 months. 75 pre owned cars and trucks clearance price plus top dollar for your trade hurry in before these hot deals are gone or shop online at
at TerryFord.com. Terry Brothers Ford in Iowa City, here for you. 84 years of preparation, the wait is over. The Oxyokins brand new book, Our Recipes, Our Story, is on sale now. 90 pages in full color, 67 recipes, and our unique history for only $24.99. Get yours while they last at the Oxyokin. Available soon by mail order along with our current serving hours at Oxyokin.com. Oxyokin in the heart of Amana. You know, <laughs> we were just having an in-depth uh, conversation. What's I, that? I and Pat were just having an, uh, a conversation. Yeah. Yeah. And, what were you talking about? Uh, the story he sent me. Yeah, Wall Street Journal. Oh. We're going to spare our reader, our listeners. They no, don't, we they don't want to bring it up. They don't need to hear it. No. Well, not, you bought it up yesterday. Not good. <laughs> well, oh, you brought it up on the air yesterday? Well, we talked about it on the air, but not, you didn't not ma- on your segment. But you did. Did you mention names? Yes, it's in the Wall Street Journal. Oh. It's like a lead story in the now everywhere. Did, what you, word did they use? Huh? Poop or defi- defecate? Defecate. Yeah. I would, have been, I would like to have seen the word poop in a headline. Thing. <laughs> you. A poop sickle. <laughs> it's really. You. It's ridiculous. Yeah, that. that yeah, but uh, I mean the Wall Street Journal. <laughs> because WWE is a, is a huge company. Oh, yeah, yeah, I and get it. And people invest in it, and it's, I mean. I've never, I've never had any interest in it. Yeah. I have None. less than zero interest. None. Well, Netflix uh, just took it away from uh, NBC. They're going to show uh, the wrestling on Netflix. They said Netflix has more subscribers now uh, than uh, people subscribe to cable. Wow. Changing world. It is. Let me, I'm going to look to see, any, any, see if we got any updates, what's going on here. See if there's any. I still just get a kick out of that. The fact that somebody there took a photo of Kirk and that guy sitting together having coffee and then sends it right to his friend who puts it up on you Twitter. Know, it's like paparazzi, you know, for an offensive coordinator position. You know, Iowa's aware that's out there now. Oh, sure. I'm, my guess is they're probably not happy. Do you think of course they're, they're not. But we're still laughing at it. <laughs> right. it's, but that's the world we live in now. But, you know, no word on what they had to eat. We don't no. know. I mean, and we don't know. for Well, I think Kirk's a coffee drinker. I don't know. I mean, because it looks like they were having coffee. I'm not a coffee drinker. Are you a coffee drinker? Well, absolutely. Yeah, I've never never had coffee. I you know, never unless had. Unless it's like, you know. Uh, two big mugs a day is what I have. Well, my dad used to drink a ton of coffee. I'll have uh, maybe once a month now. Because I cut back. Uh, My dad drank it all pay. at all times of the day, too. And he'd always leave his cup around the house half full. My mom would drink. Jan drinks it a lot. And black, coffee black and really hot. They, uh, I remember my parents a lot when we'd go out to eat, they'd always ask, hey, could you um, warm this up a little bit? And you'd see the waitress kind of roll her eyes and probably hacking it when she's going to put it in the... <laughs> yeah, that's right. I always said to my dad, do you ever worry that um, some of these waitresses are getting pissed and they may hack in that thing? And he'd be like, oh, shut up, you know. <laughs> He goes, no, I don't worry about that. Well, he'd be like, why don't you worry for me? That's what he would say. Why don't you worry for me, son? I'm like, you bet, Dad, I definitely will. It was kind of an Andy Opie moment. So, but um, but yeah, the basketball. It was funny because Dallas and Rob both they got. I asked. They said the crowd was very disappointing at tip off. It filled in a little bit. It did a little, a little bit, bit, but it was for the most part. But you know, I I was tweeting or texting back, and I'm not a texter at all. I'm not we're either. texting back and forth during the middle of this game, and I said to Tom, you know, the fact that we're texting back and forth kind of says something about this game. And, Tom, I think you kind of like, you know, that you're right. I no, mean, the first ten minutes was what the hell is this? It was It was. It bad. was just brutal. Yeah, and that's just one that got away, man. I mean, if they could be four and four right now, I mean, there's a big difference between four and four and three and five. It's huge. Huge difference. And, like I said, I mean, Michigan did beat Iowa here, but, I mean – I would not be surprised if Iowa went up there and beat Michigan. This Michigan team's got a lot of issues, but 
they have shown that they can beat Iowa. I'm not saying that Iowa, Iowa's got a chance to win this game. And they've got some winnable games coming up, like Minnesota, Ohio State. I mean, none of those teams are great teams. No. I mean, but the Big we're Ten, not either. No, I know. The Big Ten is filled with a bunch of average teams. They are. And um, I watched that Northwestern Illinois game. Man, was that a fun game to watch. I mean, Boo Booey, and I mean, and they had a little some. They had a little temper flare. One the Ty Berry, the Northwestern guard, said something right at the end of one of the Illinois players, and Coleman Hawkins had to be restrained. I mean, he was going, he was chasing after him at midcourt, and then coaches from both staffs got kind of separated. But there were some. I'll give um, Brad Underwood credit. I mean, I thought he was very gracious in defeat. He blamed himself. He blamed the defense that he called in the second half, five switches. And he said, he goes, this was, it did not work. He goes, then that's all on me. And I, I respect him for yeah. that. I mean, yeah. I, I like it when a head coach will come out there and say, and I've, Kirk's always been pretty good about that. I've never seen, has Kirk ever thrown an individual player under the bus? Can you think of ever? Kind of deuce. Well, deuce, but he wasn't playing. No. But yeah, he did. That was, and he did apologize for that. I think that was Kirk trying to be funny. <laughs> it just back, it didn't work. It backfired miserably. That I when he said that, I'm like, did Kirk really just say that? And he, you know, he had the little snort afterwards. And he walked it back. Yeah, but... he said he was sorry. But as far I'm talking about somebody who their performance on the field for a loss or something. I don't recall Kirk ever saying, well, you know, if so and so would have caught that pass, or you remember Alford. I mean, like yeah. that time Alford just just rip Jared Reiner at the Big Ten tournament early in his career. And, I mean, I, it was good to see Underwood do that. But I'll tell you, Chris Collins has done a hell of a job at Northwest. And that is not uh, a super packed, talented team. No, and he's a super nice guy sure. from what I can well, tell. Well, we were talking, like, let's say Fran decides he wants to retire this year. And that's totally his call. I'm not saying he should. Just for discussion's sake, um, Chris Collins would be number one on my list. I, uh, yes, I think so. Darian DeVries would be high up on my list for what he's done at Drake. He's and done his a good, brother real good here. He's job. very familiar with the terrain. Chris Collins would be my first call if I'm Beth Getz. You interested? He may say I'm not interested. I've got a good thing going here at Northwestern. Don't have as – I mean, there's higher expectations at Iowa, a little more pressure to win at Iowa. And the big thing with Iowa, okay, here's the next head coach. Are you going to finally be the one to get us back to the Sweet 16 if Fran doesn't do that? That's going to be out there. Sure. He doesn't have that at Northwestern. He's the only coach to lead them to the NCAA tournament, and he's getting ready to do that for a third time. He's a legend there in some ways. Well, he's done a great job. But he's done a great job. He would be my first call if Fran were to retire. Now, if let's say Lisa decides she's going to retire, and I, these are all just hypotheticals. I'm not hinting or Kim Mulkey got to be your first call. No, call. my I'm kidding. Uh, of course, uh, to me, it would be two people race: Jan Jensen and Jenny um, yes. Branch down yes, at Oklahoma. I, It'd be, and I think Jensen would get first dibs on it because she's here. Yeah. But then, if she decides she didn't want to do it, then I think the next call you would make would be to Jenny Lillis Branchick, and then um, um, football. Who would be your first call in football? Wow. I haven't, you know, honestly, I should have given it some thought, but I haven't. Um, well, it's not like we planned for this. I mean, I mean, if there's somebody on staff, maybe. Um, Parker and LeVar Woods yes. would be the two members yeah. of the staff that I think if they were interested would definitely get consideration. Mm-hmm. I think there's a lot of groundswell support for LeVar Woods. He's, you know, he's younger. And, um, and I'm not just age discrimination because I'm not much younger than Phil. Phil's uh, uh, Phil's about a half a year to a year older than I am. Um, but then outside-wise, we've talked about this before, I think Chris Kleeman, the Kansas State coach, Iowa ties, played it. His the, name comes up with every – And, and every he's done a good job there. Yes, he's yeah. a good coach. I think Chris Kleeman, I think Lance Leopold, although he's up, you know, he's not getting any younger. I mean, Kleeman's in his mid-50s too. But um, I'm trying to think if there's any other – if there's any – well, Mark Stoops. I think Mark Stoops, if he was interested – I think Mark Stoops would definitely be considered, but he's also not getting any younger. No, Mark Stoops is pushing sixty. I was going to say he's almost great. He's about a year or two younger than me. Yeah, he's yeah. pushing. Now he could coach for another ten years. I mean, I don't think the. Do you think the next Iowa coach is going to be here twenty five years? No, I don't either. No, not, not I think in we're the seeing. I think we're seeing eventually the end of an era. The Kirk and Hayden thing back to back. That's pretty unique. So what was Hayden's first year? Nineteen seventy nine. Seventy nine. Song by what? Who are there? The Smashing, Smashing Pumpkins. Pumpkins. Yeah, love that song. I don't know if I love it. I don't mind it. Love loves a little. Song. Loves a little strong. I love little it. strong. Love it. <laughs> love it. How about a whole lot of love by Led Zeppelin? You I love that love song? That song. Yeah. Play it. That's a good bathroom song. You could go down there and you could hang out in there for a while while that thing's going on. <laughs> you play a whole lot of love on the uh, uh, the plus on the plus, right? Yes. There you go. 
So, but um, but yeah, I'm trying to think if there's any other. I mean, I used to think the Wake Forest coach, but they've kind of leveled off. And he, I don't, I, um, Dave Doring, the North Carolina State coach, he played at Drake and went to Drake, and he's done a pretty good job down there. But yes, I, I mean, I think if someone like that was interested, I think he would be a good interview. He's done. I think they won nine games this year. They've had. He's been pretty solid down there. And but I don't. I mean, it's not like they're going to get. They're not going to get the top flight coaches. Saban come out of retirement. Steve Sarkeesian. I mean, you know, Jim. They're not going to get that type of of list of coaches. Urban. Yeah, Urban Meyer. I mean, well, that would be. I guarantee, though, if Kirk did retire, there would be like Urban Meyer rumors on. You know, there would. Oh, be. of course. Because that's just the world we live in now. I mean, social media just kind of creates its own news, and whether you want to believe it or not is up to you. Yeah, Urban Meyer seen at uh, the Prairie Lights Coffee House. Doctorman's got a photo of him <laughs> <laughs> eating it, uh, drinking now, coffee at Scooters. Remember all the, <laughs> remember all that. That's a coffee shop out on First Avenue, right? Yeah, yeah. Remember all the Urban Meyer rumors about Michigan State? Yeah, was a, that was never. There was never no. anything to that. No. And the, uh, um, it sounds like Sharon Moore has it been official yet? I, I, not official, but he's. He's going to get it, don't you uh, Well, think? when I asked Jamie, Jamie made it sound like that's what he thinks is going to happen. And I read a story yesterday saying he is clearly the leading candidate. And it'll be interesting to see because sometimes these things work great. Sometimes they backfire. Now, in he, the, some post-game comment, wasn't he swearing? On Dropping the, the F-bomb. Yeah. Yeah. Dropping the F-bomb. Well, you got to yeah. respect that. You like that? Maybe that's the deciding factor. But, yeah, he did apologize for it. He was defending Harbaugh. It was after... I believe it was after they beat Ohio State, and he was very emotional. He got caught up in the moment. He did later apologize. I mean, if the worst thing he does is say the F-bomb on air, you know, I think we can survive that. I don't know. Yeah. Well, don't you know? I don't know if we can survive it. What are you reading? Looks like you're, uh, you're I scrolling through. I just from uh, Mediacom. What are they telling you? I don't know yet. It was funny. I got all these notices from Mediacom last week saying, hey, we're going to be doing maintenance work over. You're going to be without power. And blah, blah, blah. Never lost my power the whole time. At least I don't recall ever. Uh, so they told me I was going to lose power, and I didn't, which was, that's a change. Yeah, Usually with Mediacom, they don't tell you when you're going to lose power, and you lose it. But my Mediacom has been working pretty well. You haven't heard me bitch about it for a long time. No. It's been pretty solid recently. I think they've we, made some changes. When they, we had Mediacom, we didn't have any trouble with it. Well, like we I said, I, any I had a one to four year, about a two to four year stretch where it was brutal, and my neighbor went through it. Same thing. And we had more dropouts with Dish than we did with Mediacom. Sometimes with Dish, it's weather, too. Or direct TV. Yeah, very much so. Yeah, and I don't, Mediacom's not as much weather, is it? I don't, I don't know. I don't think it is. I mean, with the Dish, I mean, if it gets covered. Yeah, no, we have a, uh, standard rates. This is what's going to. This is what's going to set me off. Oh, they're going to. Are they sending stuff about their prices are going up? I don't know. Because they basically told me a while back I should expect to pay twenty dollars more every year just from just the cost of living. That's what I'm starting to see a lot more now. Let's see. The pr- the problem, is, I mean, with in today's world with streaming and media, you know, your cable TV, and it, if you we watch very few things on regular TV. I mean, some sporting events. And that's really about it. And um, on show, you know, stars, we watch one show. On HBO, we've, you know, watch one or two a year, you know. So it's, for us, it's just we're spending a lot of money for things that we don't use very much. Yeah, that's just that's that's the, the world problem. we live in now. Yes, it is. I mean, to exactly get what you right. want, you have to pay for a lot of extra stuff. That's right. And that's just, I mean, I don't think that's going away. Mm-mm. I'd love to be able to just sit down and pick out like 11 stations I want and just be... order each one. And then they tell me, okay, Perfect. that's going to cost you this much to have those 11 stations. Will we ever be like that? No. No, not at all. But doesn't nope. that make more sense? Of course it does. Have you, a cafeteria. It have a cafeteria. It you makes basic... more sense to you, but not to the companies. Yeah, so the companies basically, so they can make money, want us to buy channels that we don't want to. Yeah, that we would make, never watch on a bet. Yeah. yeah, if they don't, well, but some people do. I mean, yeah. some people like those channels. If uh, That's why I say you should have your own selection process. I, I mean, that would be great. DirecTV, there's like 30 porn channels. 
you know, I've never watched one of them. Wow. But what there's am I, at least 30 of what them. What am I doing with Mediacom? I'm wasting my time. Well, <laughs> they get point channel. Sounds like more like a rec TV. I'm, I'm guessing they're all, uh, Can I they're all pay-per-view. <laughs> Can I say that? You did. You get the, did you get the joke? <laughs> yeah. I did. <laughs> I got the joke. That was a joke. This isn't just all Hawkeyes and in-depth Hawkeye analysis. What are you looking at, man? You're I'm just all over your like, phone. Well, I'm looking at, okay. You're like a. So, a standard insulation. Installation of, huh. uh, how much do you think that is? For what? Installation for what? What are we talking? Uh, cable and uh, phone and everything? I don't know, but even though I've paid for it before, I, I don't know. $109. Okay, that's... The, the, you the, mean before you've watched the show, you have to pay $109? For them to install it, yeah. I mean, yeah. Yeah, I mean, yeah. 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 Well, they got to make their money somehow. Yeah. Service. If you call for service, it's $49. Well, so they're saying it's a fifty dollars service call. Yeah. Uh, but why are we? Who cares? Why are we discussing this right well, now? Why would you pay for if it doesn't work? It's their cable. Yeah. Fix it. Yeah, I've never gotten charged. All the times I've called for my cable, they've never charged me. So, but I'm. Are you bored with this conversation? Uh huh. Yep. Well, it just pissed me off. Okay, but I mean. Well, it pissed me off. But they're not. They don't do that. I mean, like I said, I've had well, numerous service calls. But why did I get this thing well, saying they're going to do it? I don't know. I haven't gotten that. So what offer did Harbaugh turn down from Michigan? Was it ten almost one hundred and fifty million dollars? Ten for one twenty-five. One twenty-five. So twelve point five a year. And I don't know what his salary is with the Chargers. I don't think it's going to be quite like that high. It'll be. Don't get me wrong. He's not going to be hurting. I think Harbaugh wanted to get back. He wants to win a Super Bowl. Well, clearly, and and. Uh, I think he wants to get out ahead of the posse. Too. Oh, I think that's part of it, too. Yeah. And my guess is, and this is no knock on him, he's probably bored. He's been there a decade. He got his championship. He probably doesn't want to keep recruiting. Yeah. I mean, got Harbaugh, his championship. He got his championship. He left on top. He beat Ohio State three times in a row. The timing's perfect. I mean, Harbaugh's not young, but he's a young 60. He's my age. Yeah. I mean, and, I mean, Harbaugh looks like he coached another 10, 15 years. Yeah. His brother's the same way. His brother's got a Super Bowl. He beat him. I think that's the one thing that Jim is still itching to do now. He's done everything else. He's been to a Super Bowl. He won a national championship at Michigan. This is the last frontier for him. And he's also um, going back to California. I mean, I don't. I doubt. Do you think he'll keep a home in Ann Arbor? My guess would be no. I don't think he can afford it, do you? <laughs> yeah, well, and maybe he will. Maybe he's always going to want to keep that. But my guess is, and I'm – putting words in his mouth i'm guessing he's probably it's probably more appealing for him right now to live in malibu or you know what i'd say and than in ann arbor ann arbor's a nice town don't get me wrong yeah but you could make a strong case that living on the beach in malibu is better than living here in some ways you, if you can afford shoveling it shoveling your walk if you can afford it is what i'm saying yeah so just imagine turning down 125 million dollars well, the other thing, too, I've got to wonder, though, if there's any chance for advanced ownership, too, down the road. Yeah. But I think he just wants this is a new challenge. And like I said, I have not seen what his salary is, I, but I haven't read that. Case. I haven't seen it. I either. don't really care that much. When I saw that, he's, oh, he's going to the Chargers. Okay. I mean, I, there was, I guess he was interested in the Bears, but the Bears have chosen to stay with this Matt Eberflus. I mean, the Bears showed some improvement this year. They went. I mean, it's obviously not money related for Harbaugh. For Harbaugh, no. I mean, he's got to make. He's going to make millions wherever he is. I just think he wanted to get out of college and he wanted to get back to the NFL. And let's face it, guys. I mean, recruiting is a major part of being a college coach, and some guys don't like that. I mean, it, that can be a grind. And he might not like the portal either. And I do think the NCA stuff, that's – yeah, the portal's made things more complicated. I just, I just think this is the challenge. This is how he wants to end his career with a chance to win a Super Bowl. And he does have yeah. a young quarterback, Justin Herbert, who's good. Still got a little work to do, but he's got a decent foundation to build around. Hello. Yeah, one of the Thank you. Harbaugh thing was one of the first tweets I read was, well, now the the Harbaugh brothers can play each other in the Super Bowl. Yeah. I mean, they've done it before. No, and... no, it can't happen because they're both in the same conference. Oh, that's right. Okay. Ah, and, but, okay. You know, I'm but... like, well, this guy just showed his football smarts. You know, you come out there – Talking about how much you know about football, and then you put on a. But didn't like he? Was, didn't his brother beat him in the Super Bowl? 
Did they play Southern? I, I thought that didn't didn't. Oh, I, I thought I, Baltimore, but I could be wrong. I could be wrong. I I know they play head to head this year. I think yeah. you might. You might I thought right. Baltimore beat San Francisco in the Super Bowl. Yeah. Okay, you that did one happen. Thing you guys were saying earlier, Pat. But we were talking about this. We were talking now the Packers season's over. How lucky we've been as Packer fans to have three straight quarterbacks that are good quarterbacks. It's the same with being an Iowa Hawkeye fan. We've had back-to-back two of the greatest coaches to ever coach this game. We've been so lucky when it comes to that. To get to see Fry and Ferentz both, it's just amazing what this program has been able to put out there. And, yeah, not every year is going to be a daisy, but, man, we've had some really great years with these yeah. with these two coaches. No, yeah, no, there's been, been a so lot of – lucky. Yeah, no, there's a lot to be happy about. I would agree I mean, with that. I just get tired of reading all the negativity. I know I love reading Twitter, but there's so many people out there that – proclaim themselves to be experts that don't don't know you know uh, anything to do about football and yet you want to sit out there and say oh parents should be fired and this and that and then when everybody was getting on brian's case it's the same thing it's just you know you hate to see it but there's all of that out there and it's like you said they can live anonymously on the internet so it was easy for people to criticize yeah, no, and Kirk should not be fired. That's silly. Now, if there's a fan who wants a coaching change just because he's bored, that's a fan's prerogative. And that's a fan, and I, you know, I, but no, the thought of Kirk being fired is just ridiculous. Brian, on the other hand, deserved to be fired. Yes, I think I, agree. Yeah, but I, I just don't think people realize what we have. Because there's, who are you going to get that's better right now? Who's better than Kirk? I, but who knows? I don't, I don't agree with you, you there. You can't have that attitude. That's kind of like, I get, I, Kirk deserves everything. He's done great, but yeah. They might get somebody better. Hell, they could hire Mark Stoops, and he may come up here, and you don't, you just don't know. But I get what you're saying. I get the support for Kirk. He's done a great job here. But I don't. You just can't assume that oh, everything else would be worse. I don't. I'm not buying that. Okay, well, that's my opinion. I just no, that's where you're right. You're, you have I, your right to your Kirk opinion. Ferentz. I think he's a great coach. You know, I'm. I, I look forward to this. Oh, yeah. okay. Thank you. Okay, uh, it looks like listen to that. Looks like Harbaugh's uh, contract is five years for at least a hundred million dollars. So he's twenty million. Almost years. doubled. Here, here it says he's making uh, twelve point five million a year. Well, yours says twenty. Right? That's what he was going to make well, in Michigan. It's, it's what it says. Michigan, they offered him one twenty-five over ten, but you're saying he's making twenty. Well, this is the, what the Chargers are paying them. Well, that's what he that's just told us. That's what I just yeah. said. Five, five years. So we have two different. Hey, it's just like the weather with you guys. You guys can't agree on anything but lunch. Have you decided where well, you're we going? We haven't decided on that. Either. Where are you going? Should we let the, yeah, li- where, where are you going, should we let the listeners participate? No, where, where are we going? What are you in the mood for, I Captain? It's your birthday. I have, I have no What sounds good? Uh, Everything. Mexican, Chinese. All of the above. Well, he can't eat Chinese. I can't. Oh, that's right. Sure, I can. But you don't like it. Well, that's not my first choice. Yeah, you don't like it. You, should, uh, you know what you should do? Go to Kraken and sit over there and talk to Ray in the booth there. That is one thing I will not do. Come on. That one guy might be there. You could fight on your birthday. <laughs> Wouldn't you love to see him get into a fist fight on his birthday? Yeah, that, that would great. be great. Kraken's is delicious. Yeah, it is. I love it. Ray could, it Ray could officiate time, it. But I'm not sitting there. There's got a couple. They got two, Ray? They got two tables there. The President of the United States just wished me happy birthday. But he's a people person. He used to ride the train every day to work. He'd sit on that booth with Ray. <laughs> what, are you better than Ray? <laughs> I'm No, no, I am not better than Ray. <laughs> that was just my suggestion. Kraken with Ray. <laughs> Hello. That sounds kind of... That sounds kind of creepy, doesn't it? Cracking with yes, Ray. Yes, it does. <laughs> Did you read that article? No. <laughs> okay. No. I, was I didn't say crapping with Ray. I said cracking. You get it? Cracking, the name of the place. Yes, yes, with no. Ray. Hello. Yeah, I think you guys ought to go to Hilltop for lunch. Yeah. yeah. Well, that's possible, too. Yeah. yeah. Hey, hey, one other thing. Um, you guys might have touched on it earlier. Did you guys talk about the uh, kind of off-subject, I don't know, um, the MAGA guy who got escorted out of a trump rally thing and he, he no. really got on him about it or uh, no no i don't no. follow any of that yeah, stuff. i don't i i think i think he's talking about some kid who took a photo of trump's lawyer when she was sick 
and he's a big Trump sycophant uh, yeah, but she, from New Hampshire. Yeah, and she wasn't really and they're, sick. But they're mad because he exposed yeah. her, so they threw him out of it. Yeah, I saw that, but I didn't really. Yeah. I right. don't care. We haven't talked I, I, don't, I just don't care. Well, I'm so sick. I, well, yeah. I just thought it was kind of hilarious. Well, I mean, I yeah. Maga I mean, hat wearing idiot, and he's all for <laughs> Trump, and then all of a sudden, boom, there he goes. And, out he'll, the and he'll still vote for well, him. Yes, he will. Yeah. The judge, uh, Trump, walked out of court today. Uh, in that uh, in that hearing, and the judge uh, threatened his attorney with jail. But, the hot one? Yes. What's her name, Alina Haba? Yeah. She's pretty hot. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> Colbert talked about her yeah. last yeah. night. Yes, yeah, Trump's yeah. attorney. Okay. It was pretty funny. Well, thank you. Hey, uh, thanks, guys. Thanks. thanks. Yeah. yeah, but I, I'm just trying not to. I just am so goddamn sick of it. It's going to be another freaking year. Yeah, ten months. What about Morning Joe? <laughs> Honestly, it's just... Mika and Morning Joe. I turned them on this morning. They were just ripping Trump. They Didn't he used to be a Republican congressman? Yeah. He hates Trump now. Yeah. He spends all morning... still like a Republican. And he still spends all morning just ripping him. Him and his wife do. Yeah. She just shakes her head in disgust, and he just rips him. He called his... He, here's a guy that's... Uh, Trump called his wife ugly, and he and he is pissed off about. And she's it. not ugly. No, but he's pissed off about. It. It's not like Cruz. Yeah. <laughs> Hello. I think a trip down to Burlington would be perfect for your birthday. <laughs> yeah, watch. I think it would. Too. Oh, yeah, I hadn't thought about that. Yeah, yeah, you well, can have Justin serve your food. Yeah. Yeah. No, he's not a server. He still hasn't climbed up to server status no. yet? When does that happen? Well, he sets up the salad bar yeah. and the buffet. You see him pulling it out of his pants. <laughs> but he's not a server. <laughs> no. What about his hands? Does he wear gloves? No, are you sure he sets up the buffet? I don't he think he does. He said he did. He said he was setting up the buffet when he had 109 fever. <laughs> 109, huh? That's what he said it was. But Weatherbug said it was, what, 110? <laughs> no, they would have said 108. No, it would have been more positive, yeah. yes. Yeah. To, so I, that's a good idea. And um, <laughs> you should. Um, I mean, the buffet <laughs> is good. I will we'll say that. But Take, not worth the drive. This, yeah, this radio station will. Not after that incident, this radio station will no longer participate no, no. <laughs> and have anything to do with it. No. With the no. With what? With the, that. The oh, restaurant. the restaurant that had him come in when he was sick. Yeah, we made him come in with COVID. Yeah, That's, yeah, I can see you're you're taking a stand. Yeah, there's only so much that you can tolerate. <laughs> well, he... <laughs> and that's what Beth Getz did with. Brian Ferentz, yeah. fair to say? It's the same thing. Yeah. She took a stand. I, yeah, I had to take a stand with uh, with him. And um, the gambling stuff, I saw Brands, um, he met with the media, and um, Dr. Moe was there, and I don't think Scott normally goes there, and he was clearly there to ask her. And fair enough. I mean, he was doing his job. He yeah. was there, and uh, Tom got tired of the line of questions, but I had no problem with what Scott was asking. But, I mean, I think there's going to be a ton of lawsuits. And don't we ultimately so. don't we ultimately as taxpayers pay that crap? Yes. See, that's going to piss me off. Well, but there should be a ton of lawsuits. There should be, but I don't. I don't. I'm not happy that I'm going to be the one helping to pay well, for it. So it's the state, and the state did it. And I mean, the, you know, it's it stops it. It stops at bird anyway because you don't, you know, get into somebody's phone without a damn warrant. And you know something? It's hard to get a warrant to get into somebody's phone. It's hard to get a warrant. Yeah, I mean, mm -hmm. so it's going to be interesting to see. I was talking to a law enforcement how this plays officer out. Uh, that works in the area, and they had, to, you know, they were working on a, a drug situation, and he had to go uh, to a judge three times before he could get the search he, warrant. He, yeah. Did you see the news that came out about the former LSU wide receiver? No, his gambling. Wow, I mean he, I mean it's starting. This is the, he's in the pros now. But in twenty twenty one and twenty two, he bet a ton of times, serious money, and now they issued a warrant for his arrest and he turned himself in. So his last name is if, 
B O U T T E, Jay Sean Booty. I remember him. He had almost 2,000 receiving yards for them, but man, it sounds like he was placing a ton of bets. Wow. How, so, did they do, how did they afford it? Well, he was and, winning. And, I mean, at one point, he had, I think I, he, he won a lot, too. He lost and he, he bet on his own team. And I mean, but I think we're going to start seeing, I think this Iowa thing will eventually, we'll look back at this as what opened up Pandora's box. I think we're going to start seeing more of this. And um, when they put it on the phone, man, that just, I mean, they could have kept it even on a laptop or a desktop or something. But, boy, when they put it on the phone. Have the app? Yeah. Just made it too easy. Well, DraftKings says when it it went on the phone, uh, they're, uh, you know, they're increased. Oh, uh, sure it did. Like 22 22 and a half I mean, because people live on their phones now. First week. People live on their phones. Yeah. I mean, I joke about how much you're on your phone, but college kids, you you see kids now, they're, they're, it's just this. Well, see, and that's that bugs me when I'm at a live sporting event. They're spending most of their time looking at their phone yes. instead of watching the game. If you see pan shots of, like, sporting events, even pro events, you could have Kevin Durant and LeBron James playing right in front of you. There's people staring in their yeah. cell phones. That's just the world we live in. Hello. I was watching the news the other night, and there's a DCI agent who's also a state representative, and he was saying that the gaming laws in Iowa allow them to surveil your cell phones without a warrant. It's no, written right I've the heard, I've, I've read that's going to be part of the defense. Yeah, I don't know part of the defense, but that's it goes against federal law. It may be unconstitutional, but well, it is written yeah. into the law. Yeah. Well, there you go. Iowa can, or Indiana, or anybody else can say that they can do that. But it's against federal law. And it goes, and here's why I know, because it goes under the same situation. The law was tailored uh, for that and for us actually broadcasting calls without getting permission. When you call this number, you'll hear a, you'll hear a tone, and you know you're calling the number that's directly to the radio station. Yeah, otherwise, I have to say, you're on the air, and they have to acknowledge that they want to be on the air. Either they can. But that is going to be their line. defense. Yeah, and, I mean that's. It's it, the, it'll be yeah, interesting and to it's see. It's against federal law. It'll be interesting to see. None of us know how this is going to play out, man. This is going to be. I no. bet they win. Yeah, but we don't know. I mean, no, we're just I, we're just speculating. Uh, uh, what do you want to bet? Uh, well, I'm not going to bet anything. I mean, bet something. Because um, hundred dollars. No, because if I won, you wouldn't pay me. I would pay you. I'm not a. T- I'm not a deadbeat. I bet no. I don't want to bet on the betting. I just, I just think so much of this is fluid and uncharted territory. We don't know where this is going. I mean, and now That's there true. are a number of students. That's that all I'm saying. Aren't athletes that were living next to these guys that have got lawyers. Yeah, I just don't think they're going to start rewarding millions of dollars to anybody. And there's just, that's well, just, no, that's not, not going to happen. They're not going to do that. And I do think some of these, like especially the Iowa State ones, like the wrestler who bet thousands of times, that you know, there is another side to this too. I, I get the invasion of privacy and all that stuff, but these guys were breaking rules and yeah, laws. Yeah, it's true. And that's going to be weighed, I think, when all this stuff. Eventually goes to court, it's, it's very but true. it is going to go to court, and even if they well, already, yeah, they, yeah, are, and even if they lose, I mean, we're still going to pay for it. There's two Iowa State guys, uh, two Iowa State athletes that have already filed suits and hired lawyers. That's who's that's whose motion we, that was just we just all read. He was representing a, a wrestler and a football player, wasn't he? An Iowa yeah. State wrestler and an Iowa yeah. and a football player. But I mean, it is we're going to pay for it, whether win or lose, we're paying for it, and it ain't, and it ain't going to be cheap. No. Well, I just wonder if any DCI agents are going to pay for it, like, with their jobs. Hello. Hey, Pat. Yeah. Uh, are you aware of, or has anybody made you aware of, of the Wednesday edition of the Daily Iowan? Um, the one, there's a picture of me standing next to Beth Getz. Yeah, on the cover. Yeah, my neighbor, my neighbor brought it over to me last night. Okay, good, because I saved two copies. Oh, well, thank you. I appreciate it. But, yeah. yeah, uh, Well, no, I thought it was kind of weird that they showed her from the back, but it was also sort of artsy, crafty. Well, they were trying to show the media around her, kind of like, you know, she's. Oh, okay. I think that was, I I, I don't want to try to read the mind of the photographer, but that's kind of what I, because they have her standing there facing away from the camera, and then the big 
assembly of media is kind of surrounding yeah. her. Kind of shows yeah. you the importance of the event. I think that's what they were trying to do. Boy, she is tall too. Well, wow. she wears high heels too. Oh, she does. Yeah, okay. I mean, she wears. High, but I'm guessing best probably five eleven, five, because I'm right at six feet. And um, but yeah, the other day she had some pretty high heels on. Okay, and, that's. What but no, she's like. not short by any means. And I'll end on this. This booty guy from LSU. The story yesterday was that he bet over nine thousand times. Yes. So. He did a lot of that. Hey, good show. Thanks. Thanks. Bye. Didn't Hunter Decker's bet like almost 3,000 times? Yeah. yeah. Yes, he did. Yeah, and he got up in the morning slaving for bread. So. There you go. It is the same last name. Well, Decker's and Decker. One's singular, one's plural. Yeah, one is singular. But I'm, I'm not saying these guys, if their rights were violated, hey, go after them. But if they wouldn't have broken the laws and the rules, there wouldn't, there wouldn't, we wouldn't be in any of this. That's true. I and I don't, and I do think Iowa and Iowa State both, like Rick said Monday, they remind these guys all the time that you can't gamble. Yep. It's not this, oh, Iowa got lax. No, they didn't. This was going to happen. And I think like what you said with the t- the phones now and how easy access, it's just. It's happening on it's, it's every happening. campus in America. Yes. It just is. That's happening. Yeah. Every campus, every everybody i mean if you're one of these dci agents you should have i mean in hindsight i guess you should have gone to a judge and said man we think there's a serious gambling issue going on with student athletes and whatever but we need access i don't know do you think a judge would have given them a search warrant if they would have said we've got reason to believe that there's a lot of illegal gambling yeah, going on i think they i think would. they probably would have but they didn't though so maybe they didn't feel confident that a judge was going to do that okay, so you got the Cause that's uh, the step that they avoided top three advertisers are uh you know, flow is is number one. Yeah. Uh, then DraftKings is number two, and then uh, Liberty Insurance is number three. I mean, honest to God, DraftKings, they got to be making a ton of money. Yeah. Is that Liberty? Liberty. Liberty. I hate those. But they're they not as bad as know. Flow. I like Flow. Flow is just. Too- she's age. She's. Well, it, flow must go. She's too old. No yeah. flow. Yeah, well. No flow. <laughs> looks okay to me. At 75, she looks fine. I've just, hers <laughs> never, her commercials never worked for me. I like her. And I like Jamie. Jamie. Jamie is uh, the the guy that goes along with her now. I know. He I, works there, too. The moment I see that, I change the channel. Uh, I just, it's just nauseating. Uh, I, I like it. I I go out of my way to watch those commercials. <laughs> Are you bragging about that? <laughs> no. <laughs> Hello. Good morning, fellas. Hey, Terry. Hey, Terry. hey, this may sound like a stupid question. You've come to the right place. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Can the university turn around and sue the state regarding this uh, gambling thing without a warrant? Well, it's a state institution. I, I I don't think they can. I don't think so. That I don't know. Well, weren't they on uh, university property doing this? But it's a it's a state institution. They're not going to. They're not going to sue themselves. No. Because the money well, would be coming not. from the same place. Yeah. It'd be like I don't it taking so. it. It'd be like taking it from your right pocket and putting it in your left pocket. But I don't know. Like I said, I, I mean, we'll have to wait if Southern Justin calls in. We can ask him. <laughs> And maybe he knows. Yeah. Well, this is, this is going to turn ugly, and it's going to be expect, expensive, right? You bet. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's, yeah. I mean, it's because it costs money to sue. Well, like, what was that defensive lineman, Shannon? Yeah. Uh, Noah Shannon. I mean, yeah. I mean, he possibly could have gone to the NFL this, you know, this spring in the draft, and. I mean, he still might be able to go, but... Well, yeah, there's nothing stopping him. If he's good enough, he'll get drafted. Yeah, yeah. I think he's probably borderline. Yeah. He's not real big. Right, right. All right, fellas, thanks for answering my stupid question. Thanks, Terry. Right. And with Noah Shannon, there's been talk about and maybe he'll sue to come back for another... Would that be his seventh year? Uh... Or... Se- no, I think it'd be a six. sixth, I think. It'd be six. I mean, it's easy for us to say, oh, yeah, just come back for another year. But, I mean, but, yeah, someone like Noah Shannon, uh, this has been a tough thing to deal with. Yeah, he did break a rule. He didn't break the law. He broke a rule. But if he, yeah, I, I don't know. It's just going to be, 
interesting to see. But it's finally out. What we've been talking about for months, what we were told about this being some sting by some overly ambitious DCI agent who wanted to make a name for himself, that all turned out to be true. Mm-hmm. Now, when I was told that stuff months ago, I wasn't told that they had obtained it by illegal means that's what came out in the motion, in the court hearing, in the testimony, and that was just recently. But, no, we were told a long time ago, and the word that was used was a sting, a sting operation by an overly ambitious yep. agent or two. I was told it was an agent or two, and now we've got some names connected to yep. that now. So, yep. But, yeah, this is going to be a highly visible story that I think will take a while before it's completely resolved. I mean, I mean, you looked at the – I mean, Tony Cassiope. Mm-hmm. Like Brands was saying the other day, he has to stay ready. He may – who knows? I mean – Let's say a week from now, he may, hey, um, you can wrestle. We've decided since your information was gathered illegally, who knows? We don't know. No. Nope. Time will tell. I just feel sorry for the Iowa baseball players. that real, They're the ones that real well, and Noah Shannon now, too, um, since their seasons were, I mean, the Iowa baseball players, boom, right during midseason. And so, but, yeah, it's just, uh, it's been an ongoing but it started, I mean, they were suspended that first game, first, so May. May. So this has been going on now for, what, eight months? About about, about right? Eight, nine months? Yeah. Yeah. Roughly yeah. around there? Because, yeah, it was the first, May 5th, I believe. It was the first Friday game against Michigan State. All of a sudden, Keaton Anthony wasn't in the lineup. And the, the university explained it, well, there's an investigation going on. Then eventually we learned that it was gambling and what have you. Yeah. So, um yeah. But yeah, it's a um, it's going to be an interesting development as this thing moves forward. I mean, these Iowa State athletes aren't messing around. But like I said, that one Iowa State wrestler that's suing, he bet a ton of time and spent a ton of money. I just I'm not sure how that's going to look to a judge or a jury or ever. I mean, I mean, don't you think they'll also take that into consideration when they're trying to decide? I don't know. Or do you think if if they can prove that this was done illegally, it doesn't matter how many times they bet they're gonna they're gonna get rewarded for being the victim of an illegal search, no matter how many times they bet. Uh, that's what we don't know. That's what we don't know. Yeah, and a lot could depend on a jury. A lot could depend on a judge. Whoever it is. Well, I could depend if the federal government goes into it. Yeah. Has Brenna Bird said anything more in the last day or two? I haven't. No. I haven't noticed. I wonder if anyone's I, I tried to. I wonder if anyone's tried to. Is she out of Des Moines? Is that where she works well, out of? Yeah. Since in this job, so she comes from Iowa County. I wonder if anyone has tried to recently approach her on this in the last day or two. Have you seen? I haven't. Seen I haven't seen. I think if she did say anything, it would be all over. You would think. Yeah. So. Yeah. But uh, but yeah, it's just uh, okay. So um, yeah, how the governor said, I don't have a problem with what they did. She's already said that, right? She yeah. said that in the last day or two, right? Yeah. Okay. Which, that seems kind of a weird answer. You don't have a problem with a legal search, search and seizure? I just, she probably doesn't. No. No, she, no, she probably doesn't. A legal search and seizure that probably hurt some of her voters? She don't care. She, don't have a, she said, I don't have a problem with how they conducted it. Here you go. So how much of a bearing do you think that will have on lawsuits? I think that would have a big bearing on lawsuits. Very serious. Oh, I agree with you. No, I agree. Yeah, so hmm. back to the Hawks. Um, yeah. You confident about Michigan Saturday? Confident that we're not going to win. You don't think they're going to win? I do not. And I could see Michigan did beat them by 10 here. Michigan, as bad as they've been at times, they still have decent players, and it's there. Yeah. Um, yeah, man, if they lose to Michigan. I know. And do you have the schedule in front of you? I didn't bring it in today. I, I used to have it up here. Let me see. I think I have the baseball Because I think they have, like, Minnesota and Ohio State coming up. I got it up here. After Michigan, let's go. I want to go through. Let's do, before we call it a wrap, I want to go through the rest of it and see where we. Uh, Michigan. God. So small. They go through uh, Indiana. Oh yeah, I think yeah. Are, are they, they're, they're at adding Indiana. I'm not real confident about that one. That's on Peacock. Uh, then Illinois here. Uh, I it does. Yeah, here. Okay, yeah, I'm. I mean, the fact that it's here, I give them a chance. Chance. But if they're not careful, they if they're not careful, they could easily be three and eight here. Slide down the precipice yeah. if they're not careful. Then Minnesota. That's on Peacock. Here they. Sh- I think they'll beat Minnesota yeah. here. Uh, yeah. 
So yeah, no, these I mean these next three games are crucial. I mean, two on the road now. I yeah, I I think they have a much better chance against Michigan than I do Indiana. For sure. But they got to win at least one of them. They do. And got to beat Minnesota at home. Cuz my other concern too is if they keep if let's say they go fall to 3 and 7 3 those crowds down the stretch are going to be zero. There's not going to be many How many students were there the other night? Uh, how many student tickets are available? Is it like a couple, 3,000? I think so, roughly. Two or three? Something like that, yeah. Then there may be uh, 100? 100 students. Or less. Hello? Maybe less. For a Big Ten game at 6 o'clock. That's right. I mean, 6 o'clock, I mean, if you're a student, even if you're a hardcore partier, that still gives you plenty of time to go out and abuse your body afterwards, right? I mean, it was empty. You could be to a bar at 8.30 doing shots. <laughs> Yeah, kids, take it from Uncle Pat. <laughs> well, I'm saying legal. I want these are. I'm talking to the kids who are 21 and over. Hello. Am I looking too much into this, guys, or is something wrong with? If Fran seems off this year, or or not, I don't know, as intense as he has in years past, or am I just? Well, he's gotten a couple of technicals this year. Um, I, yeah. yeah, I don't know. I mean, I'm, I'm, you know, if you're reading, if you're seeing that, that's you. I, I haven't, I don't know. I think Patrick's situation has been kind of frustrating for him. Patrick's been yeah. out a long time and, but I don't know. Some people have asked me, Hey, would I be stunned if Fran McCaffrey decided to retire after this year? No, I wouldn't. Would I be stunned if he decided to coach for, no, I mean, I, that's Fran's call, but this, dis- there was a lot of discussion after they lost this game. You know, this is a clear example. Fran's ran his course. He needs to go. That's BS. And I, I don't buy this argument and I'm not, I know caller, this isn't you, but there's this perception narrative out there that football has been vastly superior to basketball over the last 15, 20. That's not true. That's just not true. I mean, how, show me how it's been vastly superior to basketball. No, I don't know. I, I just, I just think, uh, I don't know, man. Like, just certain things, and and I'm not a Fran hater whatsoever. I just, for some reason, and I don't know if he looks. Maybe just, I don't know, as everybody does every year. Maybe he looks older. He just looks more like worn down, even in like post game interviews. Yeah, you know, he is like, 64 years old. Yeah. I mean, I mean, he's been doing this for a long time. But I don't know. We'll see. Like I said, I mean, it's. A, I mean, his son's a junior at Iowa City West. I don't know what kind of bearing that's going to have on how long he decides to coach. I th- think it could he, have a, a He may decide that he it. wants to retire and watch his fun. You, know, you well, just sure. don't know. It, it could be a number of ways. What I'm saying is, though, this argument that it's time to move on from Fran, that's not fair if Fran doesn't want to leave. Fran still has the leverage. I mean, they've been to four straight NCAA tournaments. They would have been to five straight without COVID. They won a Big Ten championship. And granted, it was a tournament, but still – I mean, whenever people want to defend Alford, well, you want to, okay, you, you can't, there's, winning a Big Ten tournament is something, you know, I mean, that's something, so, and I just don't buy this narrative that football has just been so much better, football's last nine games in the last two years, football hasn't been competitive against a ranked team in two years, well, that's true, so, and I'm not knocking football necessarily, but to say that football's been like level A and basketball's been like level C, that's not true, I mean, I think the programs have been pretty similar. They're both pretty solid, but when they get to that next level to take that next step, basketball fails in the tournament, and football fails when they play ranked teams in big stage games. Yeah, that's true. Of of all the sports, guys, like anymore, uh, like football and ba- football used to be a big deal. I mean, obviously, um, have a, a big party in the bar, in the garage, or in the basement, and all this, you know, and that. Uh, anymore man it's just like and 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 so and to the point basketball it was like not no miss you know can't miss tv or can't miss whatever i mean i hawkeye sports is one of the reasons why i got divorced okay and <laughs> okay and, I, and i'm serious when i tell you that yeah. and, <laughs> and you mean uh, you watch too much or or not enough yeah i mean yeah i mean it was like everything doesn't matter if it was a a birthday party, a, a, a fucking, uh, sorry, a wedding. Uh, we, every, everything was, you know, and it's been that way since my grandpa. Like, everything, every family event would be co- coordinated around in a sporting event, you know? Mm-hmm. And then now it's just like, yeah, man, if they win, great. If they don't, well, yeah, that's what I thought. Of You've evolved. Happen. So, do you learn something? Yeah. Yeah. Do you but really? I am excited for baseball and excited to go to Omaha for the Big Ten baseball tournament again because I've been to that every year since it's been there. No, the so. baseball is going to be fun this spring. Yeah, it sure looks like it. 
Yeah, have a good one. All right, yeah. thanks, man. Yeah. That was funny, but no, I'm, like I said, I just that's the narrative though that I a lot of people have been thrown tossing my way. I've had some. Well, you know, Fran just hasn't been able to sustain it like Kirk has, and I, and I'm not taking away from what Kirk has done. I don't want to say I don't want to. It's but I'm just saying that I don't think there's been that big of a separation in how they performed. They've both been okay. I mean, I mean, hasn't Fran pretty much averaged around fifth in the Big Ten yes. since he's been here, and that's pretty good. Yes, and Fran doesn't have the luxury of being in a weak division. Yeah, that's true. And, and the other thing is the football basketball attendance. I get it. It's hard to compare the two. No, basketball's got an issue right now. Attendance is not good for men's basketball. But I think when the circumstances are right, it can still be alive like it was the other day. But it's hard. Going to a basketball game is nothing like going to an Iowa football game. Nothing like An Iowa football game, people plan their schedules around that. It's seven times a year. It's an event. It's all day. The game is just part of the thing. Whereas basketball, two and three games a week in the dead of winter, it's a two-hour game. You go, you leave. It's not the same. There's, it's not, not it's, at all. And I'm, I guess I'm making an excuse for basketball, but to me it's easier getting people to go to football games than basketball, regardless of what you're doing on the field is what I'm saying. So, and we're still within the top 30 attendance-wise. We average in the top 30 nationwide. Mm-hmm. Is well, that, attendance it, is dropping it, it, at schools all over the place. That's very true. And I think a lot of that is just TV. A lot of people are like a lot of people are like you know it's just so much easier to watch it on my big flat screen here. I mean, there's just I think that's a big part. What's lining their pockets is also keeping people from attending events. Yeah, that's right. It's a kind of a it's and I think they would rather have their pockets lined and deal with the empty seats, don't you? Yeah. Don't you think? Oh yeah, that's easier. Yeah. Hello. Absolutely. Hey, good morning, guys. Hey, good morning. I was just gonna throw something out too. Um, I don't know, you guys are discussing about attendance to football games. Um, my wife and I typically will go to one away game every year. Mm-hmm. And the one thing that we noticed um, very obviously, very quickly, was that there is a difference in tailgating in Iowa City than there is in, in any of the other places that we've gone to. And it's it's more, like you said, in Iowa City, it's more of an all-day type thing. It's an event. It's a very special event go to some of these other places there it's it's not like that it's 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 just not where, where specifically like where, like Illinois, well, are you talking like uh, illinois indiana yeah well I, for instance i went to evanston this has been probably 10 years back okay and uh and in in and northwestern was in their heyday um and it, so there's a lot of hype a lot of build up to it but when i was looking around the stadium it nothing they don't I mean, have any was, fans Northwestern doesn't yeah, well, pull. Um, went to um, an Indiana game, and, same. and the same thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but uh, now if you went to West Lafayette, that that place knows how to tarp. They do. They they but, do. Uh, but uh, but it is it, in Iowa City. It is it's a different environment. Of no, it's an event. Game. The game yeah. is part of it. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I agree totally. For sure. All right. Thanks. Go home. Thanks. Go and on. that just makes it a bigger challenge for basketball because they don't have that luxury of having it be an event. It's just we're going to the game. I mean, some people like you and Ann, do you ever go, like, go to di- – see, the problem, too, with the arena, it's not anywhere, like, near a restaurant. Exactly. I mean, if it was downtown, you know, you could do the restaurant and then cross over to the street. Do we, have we ever done that, gone out to eat, and then – Maybe. Go, yes. Yeah, I mean, there's oh, restaurants. Times. Yeah, I mean – uh, there's restaurants yeah. down there on the strip in Coralville that aren't that far away, but you know what I mean, though, about being able to park, go to a restaurant, and then just walk across the street to the arena. They don't. A lot of you, you can do that I mean, in a lot of you, venues. You know, if if it were a, a commerce area, if there were restaurants and bars right around Carver that would help. Arena, would we do that more often? Well, of course we. And would. others would too. Of course, but they don't have that luxury. I know some people have talked about, well, oh, move the arena downtown. That's just not feasible. No, it would destroy the. I mean, you would have no, no room. There's no room. But the no. amount of parking you would need and the amount of space it would take up room from Gilbert Street all the way to the yeah, Pentecost. No, it, it's, it's not going to happen. It can't. No. There's just no room for it. Yeah. So uh, when you were going to the games, uh, when Lick was there, did. Uh, did Ann ever say, "I if you go to one more game, I'm divorcing you, Tom? Um, did she ever do that with Ann Alfred? Ann didn't go to no. a lot of Lick games. Well, no. because wasn't she still upset about Alfred? Yes. Yeah. yeah. And then Lick she really... never threatened to The Pierre Pierce her? thing really um, 
It turned a lot of people off of yeah. Iowa basketball. Oh, a ton of people. And mm-hmm. a lot of them aren't back Well, then, and won't be back. Well, then you take the Pierre Pierce thing and then throw in three years of lick. Yeah. That's a bad recipe. I mean, Fran really took over a mess. He did. And I think it's easy to forget that. I don't want to sit here and just act like I'm defending Fran to the end because, yeah, they need to get to the second round of the tournament. That's I mean, a great porn uh, movie title. What? Three years of three, three years, years of, of lick. lick. <laughs> Jesus, where's your mind? <laughs> Get off that phone. <laughs> I don't have a phone. <laughs> Good Lord, trying to re- do a family show here, talking about the Hawks. <laughs> so no, you're not confident at all about Saturday. No. And what's the women's next game? Saturday. Uh, and they're playing. Uh, no, no, uh, Nebraska, isn't it? Nebraska. That's right. I know Susan Harmon's working on a. Feature on Molly Davis. I'm looking forward to reading that. I'll have that posted probably later on today. So we'll be at Carver between one and three, and then the we'll get home, and then the men tip off at four. At four on Saturday. Yeah, that's the men have played a lot of games on Saturday this year. They have. Remember that one year? I think they had one. And um, but but no, this is a big game. They, I mean, if they can win this game and get back to four and five, yeah. You at least you're staying within striking distance of 500. I mean, if they start dipping too far below 500, and then it's just going to be you just worry about the season unraveling. I mean, remember they had that season. What was that Lucas freshman year where they went 14 and 19? I mean, that can happen again if you're not careful. No, well, you're right. Okay. We got to run. We got to run. All right, everybody, All right. Uh, have a have a good safe Friday. Okay, uh, hawkfanatic.com. Check it out. It's free from the Hurting and Stalker Studios in the heart of the Hawkeye Nation.